Can you hear that? The call for adventure. Well, what are we waiting for? Become a legend of the sea in the Red Marrow Chronicles, an ongoing campaign for 5th edition. Explore its exotic and diverse isles, making friends along the way, and no doubt, a few enemies. All while gaining access to hand-drawn battle maps, character art, and tokens. Not to mention keeping players on their toes with the ever-growing book of encounters most random. All this and more in the Northern Wildlink. Start your adventure today. And hello. <laughs> and away we go. Was that was that you, Steve D? Did you just go? Oh, yes. <laughs> just so just as we read live. There you go. Okay. It's just a smooth opening. I um, love it. Hello, welcome <laughs> to Band of Badgers. I'm Dave, and I am not your DM for this session because uh, Ben is. He's 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 over that way, and um, he's in my chair normally, which is pretty good. So, um, and these are Ben's players. How are, how are we all doing? How is everyone? Hey. It's a good looking group. Yes, we're okay. ready. <laughs> we are, we are, we are good. Uh, I think we've been, we've been channeling in the kind of the green room, so to speak, for a little bit now. Uh, just, you know, getting calm. We, we, the, the nerves of excitement are there. So we're really kind of looking forward to enjoying this. Now, here's a little bit about Badgers in case you didn't know. Uh, Band of Badgers, what we try to do is we support writers, artists, designers, creators, uh, large and small, all across the world. And if you would like to join the band, all you have to do is get in touch, which is exactly what Ben did uh, when he thought we were doing for a few various other people, if you check out our YouTube, um, and he wanted to get a Badgers bump, which is what it's been lovingly nicknamed now. <laughs> a Badgers bump. Awesome. Well, there we go. So... <laughs> Not as sexual as it sounds. <laughs> well, maybe, it? Yes. maybe it is. Um, but that's a, that's a, that's another show. <laughs> <That could> be... <laughs> Thankfully not. That's Thankfully not. Show. Good right. lord, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am not in it. I'm not in it. <laughs> right. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. Um, over the next two episodes, we will be playing Red Marrow Chronicles and exploring uh, the new world under his uh, exploring the new world under his guidance. Which means I get to play. Now I mentioned the YouTube channel. I've got some messages coming in here. I'll sort those out in a sec. Uh, you can find all of our content on YouTube.com/slash Band of Badgers. So please do subscribe to us there as well. And uh, but when we get to next week. Uh, this episode will go onto YouTube. So if you subscribe there and ring the bell, uh, you'll get not not notification when it's gone. So, as are always, a massive thank you to you for watching and supporting us as well. So, Ben, tell us a little before we begin, and I hand the the, the reins over to you completely. Probably. Tell us a little bit about Red Mara Chronicles and your idea behind this world. Okay, so Red Mineral Chronicles is a module for 5th edition for the greatest board game in the whole world. And essentially, it, it's, it's to accompany my Patreon launch where I'll be creating resources for tabletop gaming. Say, if you was to join today, you get this entire book that we're about to play now, the first chapter of it, you get it today. Like, it's all there, all the maps, all the character art, all the tokens, everything you see tonight and next week is fully available right now over on Patreon. Cool. And how? How? What's going to happen after after that? What's the plan? What is the story? The Red Mirror Chronicles story, or yes, the... we're, we're here. We're playing Red Mirror Chronicles. <laughs> We'll stick on, stay on target. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Red Metal Chronicles basically puts the players on a ship that they've acquired by their their own means, and it's a bit after that, and it just follows the story of a crew 
exploring the Red Mineral Coast and in its exotic islands. Like I, I want to say so much, but I don't want to give so much away. It's it's a tricky. Just, just remember, this is you know this is your your product. Um, mm. We'll be playing your story anyway, but just kind of give a few teasers. What can people expect? Are there grand adventures? We know there's going to be many grand adventures in uh, chapter one. Example: There's going to be a mystery illness that the crew are going to have to try figure out how to cure. It's uh, it's all going to lead into them basically having to navigate the Red Mirror coast to figure out how to beat the big bad and learn more about him, prepare for him or her. We we don't know yet. But uh, yeah, it's just it's a. It's hard to say. I should have written all this down. I really should have. <laughs> for, for a game designer and a writer, yes. So your your background... I swear to God, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. We're only here for how many... All right, okay. Um, right, first five minutes done. Um, but your background is you're also an artist. So all yes, of the artwork an in, the, in the box below, Ben, that you can see. I don't know why I'm pointing over there. It's like I've got an extra window. Um, so all the, all the, the box below, Ben... Um, is his artwork. Now, you can also commission his artwork for your various characters, but all the battle maps, the scenery, um, basically everything that you see available on his Patreon, uh, the link is in live chat now, is available for you to purchase. And then basically, it's an ongoing subscription, so more and more stuff as it gets released will go on to those patrons. They'll be the ones who can play with this. And they don't just have to use it in your world. They can use mm -hmm. it in anything they want to do. There's no, no restrictions yeah, I... at all. I'm offering um, a book of Encounters Most Random, and it's essentially going to be an ever-growing book where just random encounters that people can just squeeze into their story, say mm -hmm. they needed a bit of filler for their own homebrews. This will provide that little bit of filler, may even give inspiration for their own things. Or, of course, if you just want to use the maps or the characters, that's fine too. Okay. So, shall, is everybody ready? Are we ready to, uh, to begin? Absolutely. Let's go. Yes. Okay. Arr. <laughs> Arr. <laughs> I just, I just imagine. It's I, I know we're going to start on the boat. Everyone's going Arr, and I'm just like, am I going to be the one hanging over the edge of the boat? <laughs> let's, let's find, let's find out. Um, so Ben, let's hope oh, not. Oh. We, we've been on this boat for a few months. You might not have. Survived that long if I, you were doing that still. <laughs> I might not, have, might not have anything left. Yeah. Uh, I now have my sea legs. So, what I will say is that, <laughs> what I will say is that this story, I the way I write my modules is that I want a lot of freedom given to the DM. So, if you want to tailor this story for your own playing style, absolutely fine. So, the way your players get onto the ship is entirely up to them. And something you'd plan ahead before. So what we discussed, if any of you guys want to discuss that. Yeah. you. One of the things I liked that Ben put, and, and as being as a DM of long-term time, for the new DMs, all of you new DMs are wanting to be new DMs. What he's going to do with the material is make it much more welcoming and easier to play and just take out of the, the, the very book itself and work with and adapt and you can grow with where a lot of mm -hmm. systems, if you look at their modules, they have more of a rigid way of doing things. Mm -hmm. He's given you a lot of freedom to be you and, and, and really have fun with the game. So all you new DMS, please pick stuff up like this because it's going to make the game that much more fun for you to want to DM for the long term. I knew I should have got Rick to sell it for me. See? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have said. <laughs> That's why they call it prep. Uh, <laughs> absolutely everything else but to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, we wouldn't be here. If we didn't believe in the project yeah, anyway, we wouldn't exactly. believe, be here in the first place. And it was Rick who actually introduced me to you. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started talking. And then yeah. you started talking about, oh, yeah, what you do as badges is great. You know, this is this is my, my dream job. This is what I want to get to. Mm -hmm. And now we're just um, now at the stage of okay. Now we're playing this game, so this is our first steps into a brand new world, um, and that's a good opportunity to hand it over to you. So here you go. You now <laughs> Let's jump into it. <laughs> so I'm going to move us on to roll twenty on the boat. So, as a party, you decided that you 
randomly got drunk one night and you went aboard a ship for thinking it was your like the ship you you got travel on. It was not. About a day into it you realise, hey, this isn't this is not our ship. What you've accidentally gone onto a ship and the captain was a bit of a dick about it. I can swear, right? You can swear, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be drinking in a minute, so this is my night off. That's fine. That's all good. It's your, it's your system. So, Go for it. Yeah, the captain was a bit of a dick about it, and you guys are like, not dealing with this guy. So you just had to chuck him off the ship. And you know what? Turns out every all the crew thought he was a bit of a dick. Mm-hmm. And they elected uh, Kahidi to fair. be the captain. I just yeah, booked the passage. <laughs> Kadili just likes the idea of having a ship. I mean, you know, whether she's a great captain or not, doesn't matter. It's a ship. We can go explore. It's all and uh, Jen's character, Mirizara, is having a bit of a complicated time with it. Yeah. She wasn't a part of this crew, and now she's being forced into it. Yep. Oh, well, I'll say that as wasn't the part of Dragonborn the- cook, that whoever this uh, uh, person down below is, is gonna have. we're going to have a talk. We're going to see if the ships, uh, foodstuffs, and whatnot are going to be palatable across the water because that won't stand otherwise. Well, you've, you've been uh, at this for a few months. You've swapped to the crew and that. You've experienced the food yourself, helped cook. And as much as you'd hate to admit it, the food's pretty good. Oh, great. <laughs> What's the cook's name? Gilly, which we, Gilly. Will, we will see in full. So this would be the start of the game. So, after sailing through the moonlit night, you all awake inside your captain's cabin. Although the weather conditions have been perfect, it has not been smooth sailing as of late. For not two days ago, the ship had been attacked by merciless pirates. But after a long-fought battle, you, inde- you emerged victorious, having only suffered at best. Minor scratches. You find a great, though, not everyone's come out unscathed, as you find a great number of your crew have come down with a mysterious illness that no spell or potion has been able to cure. With little option left, you set sail to the Red Merrill Coast, having heard the tales of the great healing tree within its Sparrow Isles, capable of healing any ailment or sickness. Knowing, knowing that you won't be long until you reach your destination, you decide to get up, and when exiting your cabin, you are greeted with the fresh smell of the sea air as the sun warmth hits your face. Though new to sailing, you have grown accustomed to the lifestyle, well, some of you at least. While taking a moment to enjoy the gentle breeze, you are beckoned up by the quarterdeck by a tall tiefling whom you know to be Hilda. So as you exit, you look up and you see a tall tiefling woman called Tilda. Ah, morning, Captain. It looks like we'll be reaching the Sparrow Isles within the hour, and uh, not too soon, I might add. I'm afraid we've gotten a wee bit worse. Uh, I'm afraid it's not looking good unless we find this cure. So, Hilda, t- tell me, do do please tell. I, I hate that we're dealing with so much sickness. This shouldn't be happening. This is beautiful. How? It's a mystery. I'm, I'm not too sure, to be honest, but um, what I will do, I will give you a quick description of Hilda while I... Is that popping up for you guys? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Hilda is a tall six foot four tiefling with long brown curly hair and light blue skin. She wears a striking red vest and a pirate hat attached with a gold trim and a long purple feather. She has a scar down one eye rendering, rendering it blind and requires a monocle for the other. You know her to be a firm but fair quartermaster and she is loyal to a T. She has great respect for you and makes it her life mission to look after the ship. So Hilda, do we do we have enough rum to ration some out to the crew? Mm. Well, we, we're a ship. Of course, we have rum. We always have rum. Though I don't think that's the that's the major issue at the moment. Well, but we have to keep up morale. With all the sickness, I don't want them angry and trying to to take over the ship, which would hurt us more. Tell I... them the captain has given them a, a, an extra round of rum for the day here in the morning to make uh, them smile and try to get us back on track as we head in towards the tree, and hopefully we can find it soon. Well, I, well apparently we're not too far from it now, though I will say, if you want to know more about this sickness, I'd probably speak to Endel. She'll know more about it. 
Good. Endel Good. is the uh, ship's medic. She turns towards you, Mirazara, Mirazara, and says, Mirazara, will you come with me? You and, uh, yes, Saru. Saru, will you mm, come with yes. me? Let, let's go find out more if we can about what's going on with this illness. I, I don't want our crew dying on us. Well, certainly. Certainly. And I'll talk to Gilly, too. Uh, how many crew members are we feeding and giving more rum to? And if they can't keep their rum down, perhaps we just keep that in other stores. Hmm? Well, yes, of course. We, we don't want to waste it. But I think sometimes a little brightening of the spirit makes for a better day. Well, I agree. Okay. Um, so as, as I walk through the ship with uh, Kadili and uh, Marizra, uh, how many people do we have? Are they like laying out on the ship or are they kind of in quarters? Or Well, in general, you see a few of the crew hands walking about um i'll say it's onto the other map so are you going to get down under the, deck, the below deck uh if kadili is leading that way yeah i'm following yeah sure i am but at, at first i stopped one of the the sailors and uh do we know the name of the different sailors no uh really it's crew hands <laughs> so if you i will just bluff it she so says, do, do you grab um, one of the she turns and goes maka how are you this morning are you feeling okay uh, pretty good captain pretty good not 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 to, not feeling too bad i i didn't got that sickness good well keep me apprised if you need anything we we want to keep the ship going so we can get a cure as quickly as possible i value your opinions let me know on these things uh be my eyes and ears please uh, absolutely i'll do that for you well, absolutely he kind of walks away with a smile like I can't stress enough how much the old captain was a dick. Like, this this is the first compliment this crew hand has received in a long time. Kadili is about that. Keep the crew happy. Um, let's go down and see what we can find out. And she kind what, of... What are we a, finding out again? Well, the sickness, my dear. We have to find out because if we don't, we'll lose the crew and we don't want that. Right. Okay. I trust in you. I know you're new to this, but you'll get the life of it. It's worth it, I promise. Okay, so who's going below that? Kadili, okay. and I think she's got Mira Zara and uh, Seru. Are the, are the rest joining, or are you staying up? Sometimes, up whether it's Rasmus or Dave, what's your character's name? Uh, me, I am Kingsman. Um, okay. But you, Kingsman. You, mentioned, you mentioned the rum, and I mentioned... <laughs> Um, so I, I think I think I've been enjoying the rum too much. We definitely have a lot of rum. Um, so I am I am going to plonk myself down. I am at the base of the uh, one of the masts there. Um, so I am I'm just going to plonk myself on the floor under the mast, enjoying a little bit of shade and a bottle of rum. Just, right. just every now and then, some crew hands are a bit scared and intimidated by you. They kind of just like they, they don't I, want to tell you to move, so they so. just step over you. Like, okay. Most, <laughs> most of the crew think I'm the dark and mysterious one. I've always got the hood over. I prefer the shade. Um, I'm not, uh, but we'll get to that bit. <laughs> so, who is that mysterious man? So, Kadili comes up and puts a, a hand gently on your shoulder. She goes, "Are you all right, Kings? Is there anything I can get you?" I am. I am fine as always. I'm just. Nursing, uh, nursing a sore head. Mm. Even after all these weeks, I'm still can't get sea legs. Well, what she does while he doesn't notice it is cast a prestidigitation and puts the scent of land and trees and green onto his clothes to make him smell better and feel better. And she goes, <laughs> well, let me know if you need anything. I'm here. I'm it fine. Can smell. I'm fine, Kadili. I just every time I sit down and lay my head back, I feel so much better. It it smells like home. It does wonders well, for the smell. That's good. She goes. You'll get used to it in time. It, it took me a while, but once I got used to it, the beauties you can see from the sea is a wonderful thing. Yeah, just don't and clean I up the sea. <laughs> well, just think on the smells of the land and the good things that you enjoy. It mm -hmm. helps. I'll do that. Uh, as you are discussing, you hear a voice from below deck. Okay. Excuse me, Captain, everybody, if I could 
If I could have you down yes. here for a moment, I went full on Scottish then for whatever reason. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. So you yeah. recognize the voice to be Endell's. So she's calling everyone to come down there. So it, right. do you go go down there? Absolutely. It's up to Kingsman whether he wants to get up out of the position he's in or not. <laughs> Let's go see what's going on. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll drag me with them. That's fine. All right. so like, so, so we get now, now, Maliku, how big are you? Can you can you kind of lift up Kingsman? Actually, you could, Mirazara. Yeah. Um, so, Kadili says, will you help him? He, I, I think he needs a little extra sea legs, at least in, to get downstairs. I know it's rough sometimes. Uh, bye. I, mean, I, I can assist on that. I'm, I'm girthy, but uh, All right. I'll bend over and, okay, okay. Oh, that is a powerful smell. <laughs> uh, well, actually, yeah, you smell it. It's green. It's just like lush green. Mm. Kadili tried to cover over the... the smell of vomit because yeah i'm, I'm imagining just... like one of the hanging tree uh uh car scent yeah, <laughs> the, like the fake smells <laughs> yeah the evergreen like yeah there you go yes. there's only so much you can do to cover that up <laughs> right. yeah so. so with concern on her face kadili goes down and, and and goes yes tell us more what 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 have you seen here what what can we do so as you go down you are greeted by Endel. Andel is a mature half elf. Oh, get it up. Andel is a mature half elf with silver hair. Though she is kind hearted, she is, has a no nonsense approach. Life on an adventuring party ship leads to many, many emergencies. So it's a good thing that you have someone on the ship who can help to clean up the wounds. Well, I know this is probably not your scope because there's illnesses on ships, but this looks much different, yes, than what we've seen in the past. She uh, she kind of looks Kingsman up and down and is like, this one's not ill, is he? No, I'm just mm. drunk. Well, yes. Learn to hold your rum. I I'll am. It. Both hands. <laughs> Other than Malaku, that. Malaku says to Kingsman, the best thing you can do is to just look out at the horizon and just focus on the horizon. Just keep Trust drinking. Me. Which <laughs> I look, I look at one porthole and we go so far. I look at one porthole and there's sky, and I look at the other porthole and there's sea, and then they keep changing. <laughs> no, 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 this no, is not. This is, no, no, one. Pick one and focus. <laughs> And okay. just okay. focus on the horizon, Kingsman. It I'll, will do you well. I'll find a, a porthole. I'll go over... There we go. I'll, I'll move across and find a porthole. Well, other than that, I'm glad to see you're all well, <laughs> Captain. Uh, yes. So I'm afraid to report two more crew hands have developed some symptoms. Follow just me. Of, just all of a sudden... Or, or were there some onsets that, that led them to feeling this way? Follow me. Let me explain. Okay. Uh, you all share company into the the crew crew deck, the crew sleeping quarters. And uh, usually more people would be in there, but they've turned it into like a bit of a quarantine zone. zone. Mm -hmm. And you just see a lot of other familiar crew hands like coughing, wheezing, not having a great time. Um, we're not equipped to handle this amount of afflicted. Not to mention any who are able to, we're sure to leave as soon as we dock again. And to be honest, I don't blame them. Ooh, we can't have that. We don't need it spreading into a port of call. Well, in regards to symptoms, they start, started to manifest two days ago, right after the pirate attack. Hmm. We take on food or wares from the pirate attack? Like, did we sack their ship afterwards? Well, we certainly sank their ship, but we didn't take any of the spoils. Hmm. And the crew of that pirate ship was, were they, what was the ancestry of the crew members? Anything uh, unusual of well, note? You may have to speak to either Hilda or one of the one of the brothers i i'm not i hid down here i'm, I'm not a fighter mm. is hilda with us 
You Hilda were a coward. Is still upstairs. Oh, okay. I remember that comment when you need healing next. Did any of them get deeper into the ship, or was it just up on the top decks? It's just on the top decks, from what you remember. Hmm. Mm. So is Erasmus with us? Man. Erasmus, can you do me a favor? Can you look around and see if maybe there are any items or idols or other type of bric-a-brac that might have been placed? This doesn't sound like a normal sickness. None of the pirates had this, yes, that we know of? Not that we know of. I know Hilda has a few theories, but i I'll be honest, I haven't seen much time. Not a bad idea looking for some sort of cursed object. It's not something we really thought of. Well, my background in dealing with hmm, the less uh, uh, and more fickle creatures of the Fae, they tend to do things like this trickery that if they can plant something and make it look as if it were natural, it will cause much chaos. And we can't, even though I enjoy creativity, we cannot have chaos on the ship. That would be bad for us. It's chaos every day on this ship. But um, yeah, um, Erasmus, would you like to make an investigation to look for anything? I, I will take it one further in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Exactly what are the symptoms? The symptoms, well, the first signs of infection begin with nausea, high fever, extreme body ache, and un uncontrollable shaking. All we can do is help lessen the symptoms or at best, she kind of leans into you, try to slow down the deterioration. Speaking of which, I, I need to speak with you in my treatment room, alone. Right. When, when she says alone, she means all of you. She nudges, or at least nods to the rest and goes, let's follow. Right, so uh, she's going over to here. So... As you guys make your way forward to the treatment room, and I'll guide you across the ship to the treatment room. Along the way, the players pass by barrels and cannons. As they near the door, they hear a large crash and a bang from across the room. You look to see Bill and Phil knocked down, surrounded by, a, surrounded by cannonballs they are frantically trying to pick up. So this is Bill. <laughs> And this is Phil. So as they, uh, as you hear this bang, you start to hear them. Watch where you go when you're dope. You bumped into me, idiot. This is exactly why mom tried to eat you as a youngling. Hey, she meant that endearingly and you know it. You're just jealous. Oh, just pick these up. You pick these up. And can, you see them starting to just pick them up. Can, can Mary go sleep? over and help well, pick them up? You can. There you go. <laughs> She's strong. Oh, thanks, she can pick Mary. them all up. Yeah, she should just do one hand. They're like, oh. Um, I will uh, describe these two. All right. So the Barnaby brothers, Bill and Phil, are identical half-orcs in their early 20s, who are rather short and stocky. These two are in charge of the guns, as well as maintaining, the run maintaining and running the cannons. As much as they bicker with each other, they are undoubtedly hard workers and do... Sure, come in handy when the shit gets attacked. All right, so hey guys. Go oh, hey, hey, Mary. Yeah, sorry, sorry about this idiot. We'll, we'll get him picked up. Hey, go. She hands him the balls, and so you you pick them up quite easily, and as you dump them into the box that they're old, and they've both just got yes, <clears throat> yes. So Kadili <laughs> walks up to both and says. Now you two, she goes, you know, you both are invaluable to us and we need you guys to not be hmm, beating up on each other. You both are equally as valuable. And it's how they you... show love. Oh, of course. Hey, sorry, Captain. I'm going to make sure this, this dingus get, gets back to work. I think this is completely You're the unfair. dingus. 
Can I walk over and tip over another one of the brass monkeys of balls and be like, look, you both have work to do now. It's fair. <laughs> they, they kind of look at it like, oh, I guess. <laughs> and so they, the, they kind of confusingly just start picking up the rest of the balls. Um, as you're having this conversation, uh, and I'll kind of clears her voice saying, I believe we was up to something. Mm. Yes. He says, carry on, you both. You, I kept get back to work, Davis. You get back to work. <laughs> so as you uh walk over to the treatment room. Mm-hmm. Well, these two are just doing a little stop check. So as you enter the treatment room, you're stricken with the strong smell of death. As you look around the room, you notice Endel's usually clean and well-organized office is in disarray with scatterings of potions and surgical tools. You then look over to the bed in shock as you see a crew hand lying on the bed. Now a decaying shell of his former self, his, his veins are bulging out with a fluorescent blue light. Each breath he takes sounds like an absolute agony. You now fully comprehend the horror of the situation. How long has he been this way, Endel? It's been a day. A day? That's not Start. or two of us at all. My and fear is the ones that are sick now, this is what they'll end up like. The mm. blue light, is that new? It only started forming this morning. Hmm. Did you treat him? I've tried everything. What specifically? Spells, potions of healing, toxins, herbs. I've tried praying. And I'm not even religious. So cool. nothing's working. Praying won't do any good. <clears throat> Firmly believe you. Are you treating the others in exactly the same way? Doing all I can for the others. All I can do is lessen the symptoms, make it hurt a little less, but I can't stop it. How far are we from shore, Captain? A few hours. Not far. We'll be into port soon, but that said, we do not want the rest of the crew to get out. Do you think... And uh, this is spreading from contact with one another. At the recommendation, uh, Saru takes a few steps back and is like, mm, <laughs> back towards uh, the cook's chambers, like, yeah. sounds like someone might need some help. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I do the same thing as well. I was like, oh, um, I, I cannot help with this one. And this is not a task for me. You do not need my bow. <laughs> and he starts to walk away. <laughs> and I'll kind of rolls her eyes like as far as I can tell it's not contagious in that way I there's no real connection with how this thing is spreading there's people who have thought of getting ill and people who haven't thought of getting ill this definitely captain. sounds like a curse she says captain I, uh, yes a, 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 a few more questions before we do any more investigation. Of so course, Erasmus. The, the, the crew that have fallen sick, do they share similar duties? Do they access the same areas of the ship? Are they on rotation, night shift, day shift, uh, and would, you know, say, access the chain locker, for example, or uh, the forward hold or something? If we can locate uh, an area on the ship that they've accessed that may be somewhere we can physically investigate further, if you believe an item or a token has been placed in front of us. From what you remember of the fight, none of them actually got below deck. It, all the, it wasn't a large ship that attacked you, and it wasn't necessarily a hard fight. So you don't believe anyone snuck past you to get inside? Ideally, is going to look over the different veins and, and just the mark looks for markings anything that's obvious um i've got both investigation or uh, arcana if it would help uh whatever whatever's higher for you 
You can throw. the investigation. No, that didn't go well. That's a two plus six is eight. So yeah, that's not going well. You uh, you kind of like try to find any kind of marking or any relatable pattern that these these veins seem to be making, but it's it's just the veins have like swelled up and started to pulse. This and. Um, unnatural heat coming from them but other than that you you can't see any distinct pattern the heat is that like a fever heat or something beyond that it feels it's, it feels slightly beyond like if you feel someone in the warm when they've got a like when they're feeling unwell this is like a beyond like if you kept your hand there for a bit too much it would it'd feel like it was burning this is more than just a fever we need to do something more. I do not know what. Um, I'd like to cast guidance on myself, please. Which is a, a cantrip. Yeah, um, go for it. And then I'll do a little bit of an investigation around around the crew hand that's sick in the bed. Mm-hmm. You know, look under the armpits, look in the behind the ears, look at you know where all the major glands are, uh, where all the major you know, connection and, and flow points are on the body. Um, is there anything that I would recall from a nature point of view that would lead me to believe that is, this could be a natural disease? Okay, so make a make a we'll, should we say medicine check? Or do you want to do nature? Uh, uh, I've rolled medicine. Um, that's a 16 on the die, so that's 19 in total. And then I'm going to add my D4 uh, for a guidance. That's another two, so that's 21. 21. Okay, so as you start to feel the glands, you start to look around, you do, as you're taking his pulse, like you start to notice the skin starts to like peel and melt a bit off. So you're like, oh, God, no. Oh. You, kind of, you kind of pull away, it's like, <sighs> his, his face is kind of like, stretching inwards to the so you can see his skeleton form like you remembered this guy to be quite a, a plump person he's just skin and bone now and so the, the body is eating itself mm, his metabolism itself. is this, so fired up it's it's basically burning off all the energy inside. yeah what you rolled you can determine that this is not a natural thing okay Ely is going to cast a detect magic over him <laughs> to see if she can see any type of Dwarmer enchantments, even a curse style of magic. Mm-hmm. There isn't. We need I to would... know where this guy has been. I, I have an idea. If you could all take a step back, please. Um, I stand in the middle of the room and I suddenly start to shift, facing on gates. The arms turn to paws and legs turn to form of canine legs. I down to the floor. All my equipment folds in on me. And after a, a minute or so, what stands before the group is a large bloodhound. I like to sniff the crew member, catch his scent. Mm-hmm. And then I'd like to take off round the boat and try and locate all of the places that that person has been um, and try and find any sort of foreign object or at least lead the rest of the party behind me and take them to all the places that that crew member has visited so that somebody can do either detect magic or um, an investigation check in those areas. Yeah, sure. Do you want to just roll a straight investigation check? Uh, I I don't want to because it's crap. (laughs) I can. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll certainly lead Raz the parties there and try and aid them if I if I'm allowed to do that. Okay, as you smell, you uh, you you guided around the the general places where a crew hand would go. You you don't really see any real connection again. There's there's nothing like there's no particular hotspot where anyone could have caught something. And then they're like a gathering, and then they've got sick off this guy. You, you can't find anything that's distinctively noticeable. 
As uh, as the the large bloodhound and uh, Kadili um, walk around the ship, I'm just gonna kind of furtively peek around the door again. I'm like, Ooh, okay. And come around the corner and uh, walk up and just like put my hand. Just I saw what happened when someone touched him, so I'm gonna stop like just the tiniest fraction from his skin and uh, just kind of mutter a few solemn words. Um, to uh, that which I favor and uh, use five points of my uh, lay on hands to cure disease. And it's like, it didn't work the other day, perhaps. This new state, and just kind of like see if cure disease will help. And then, or yeah, cure disease will That's fine. So as, as you cast it, you see a bit of the skin start to like heal, but then it's immediately like the vein starts to go and it like closes in on itself with rotten flesh again, but even worse. And the patient just lets out this like deep groan. Oh, not helping, not helping. Okay, no, don't think <laughs> that's helping. That was Saru. a mistake. Time for the ship to get to port, I believe. We aren't doing anything for this man. Do we have? I, I look at, at uh, and, and all, and I'm just like, hmm. If we have a rowboat, maybe the calming waves of the ocean might help soothe his condition. We are not putting him on a boat. Your call. <laughs> Don't <laughs> have to go you could put him on a boat and then set it on fire. Whoop. Feel like pie, and I turn. And I'm just gonna go next door to the uh, to the kitchen. Right, so as uh, as you're about to, as you look at it, open the door, you see a. Oops, sorry, let me just get it. the details up. You are greeted by Gilly. Hi, Gilly. Good morning. <laughs> as a dragonborn who is large in stature, Gilly. Gilly's red and purple scales manifest an initial intimidating presence. He's the kindest, most soft-spoken crew member, who is not just a little bit shy. He is always making sure that the ship that the ship is well fed, and he just so happens to be one hell of a cook. So as you walk in, say hello. Oh, hello, hello, uh, hello, my friend. How are you? Ah, uh, mm, yeah. Done with those muffins yet? And I look over like expectantly, but not too excitedly, looking for muffins. Like, mm. he, he, he kind of he, he was waiting for this, so he kind of pulls it under the table. Like, Got your muffins right here, my friend. All right. Um, yeah. Well, we'll I've talk also about... I've, I've also made sandwiches for for everyone for you to. I understand you're going to go on an adventure soon, so I've made you all hmm. sandwiches. I pull out a box and like it just looks kind of like a waterlogged like dark wood with a little bit of brass on it uh, for the clasps and then then the the hinges and I'm going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess this will do and I start loading up like sandwiches after sandwich like that uncomfortable number of sandwiches where you're like are you really gonna take all of those I'm like <laughs> I think this will keep the party in well mm -hmm. uh, remember to save some for the crew uh huh you'll you'll provide I know you will. Right, right. Absolutely. And I, I take out, and I was like, oh, no room for this. And I take out a couple of steaks and be like, let's God. see what you can do with these. And yeah, like, they're, they're fresh, it. like, poor, like, that still looks good no matter how long we've been at sea. And, and uh, it, it's, you know, a wonder that they were sitting in the box. Is is this the first time Gilly's seen this? Um, likely so blatantly uh our little spit spats of how i had like fresh pastry when there's not really an oven on board perhaps of, of light and fluffy nature um yeah i am now sharing the uh the nature of where it's come from i kind of feel like this is cheating you'll get there someday and close the box and then like put it aside. He, 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 he was just kind of in the middle of like looking into it, like, what is this thing? And he's like, <laughs> that's, that's all right. Uh, so, am I cooking these steaks? Sure. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll get right to it. I'll, I'll, I'll turn and walk out and like look back and just see if there's anything else worthwhile in there. Okay. Okay. Let him do it. Yeah. Let him do it. <laughs> Malaku 
would like to go up to Kadili and say, Captain, yes. I do not believe that whatever this illness is can be cured by the skills of any of our new masters or current crew. Mm. I believe we must find some place or somewhere else that may have the abilities to cure this sick crew. I like your insight, she says. I you, hate that we cannot do this, but to stay out here longer would only mean the death of crew members. So, that is my worry. You are currently en route to the Great Healing Tree. If you need to know like, how, how far away we are, you can go speak to the Sailing Master. Um, which, that being said... Mm -hmm. Gunther pops his head out the door and says, uh, excuse me, Captain. Captain, my friend. Yes, yes, um, yes. I wonder, he, he kind of hands you this small sandwich. Like, uh, could you give this to Gunther up in, up in the sailing mass? Uh, he, uh, I'm worried that he doesn't eat. Oh, of course. Of course. Oh, thank you, Captain. And she takes the sandwich and um, she finds a place that she can tuck it that is not going to cause it to fall and then she's going to go climbing up the ropes up towards the crow's nest where he is she's doing it now straight away yeah yes so go yes to yes the... so if you want me to roll the, the thing on that i can do that definitely you know what for fun we'll roll about you climbing it <laughs> go on so a 19 on the dice with a plus two for acrobatics or you, plus three for athletics, depending on what you want to yeah. do. You've done this before. You get up absolutely no issues. Um, she peers over the side and, and, and says, are you well? He's, he's kind of like looking for his telescope. Um, this is gone for an old narrow-eyed halfling, though no one really knows how old. Wearing a tattered, patched-up jacket, he is cheerful and optimistic. He's been around the world many many a lifetime, making him the perfect sailing master to help navigate the ship to where it needs to be. He's a kind soul with simple needs. So as you you kind of say to him, he doesn't quite hear you, so he's just looking away, mumbling to himself. She basically takes the sandwich while holding on to the side of the crow's nest and puts it under his nose so he can smell. It's, it's, it's something like that. I mean, what's that? But, Something oh, to eat, she says. You doing your can? Well, yes. I want to make sure you're hearty and hale for when we come into the port. Me, Don't I just starving up here. Oh, I, 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 I do all right. I'm not too bad. Good. So, um, I will tell you, Captain. We're not. I see a bit of land off in the distance, so I'd say we're about an hour's time away. Good, good, good. She goes. We need to make land as quick as possible. Um. Do take care and make sure that you feel well. We, we want those that are feeling Oh, you well feel top-notch, Captain. All right. She goes, I trust your judgment. But, again, if you don't feel well, please. She goes, I know it, it sounds bleak staying here, but what we don't want to do is have this spread. That is my biggest concern. Oh, I understand that, Captain. I'm, I'll be up here as I always am. She says, good, and scrambles back down the ropes. So, um, do you guys, you've got an hour to kill kind of thing, do you guys want to speak to Hilda or anything? Find out more about what she thinks it could be? Yeah. She's I mean, one kind of hurt. Hurt. Has anyone of us seen this tree? Do we walk up, grab a leaf, like, rub it on, like, a perfume or an odorant of some sort and it cures you? Or... You, you, you... Actually, you none of you it? have or... ever been to Red Marrow Coast. The only person who's actually been is uh, Gumfer. But that was quite, that was in his younger days, so he actually hasn't been there in decades. Who's that? Gumfer, the sailing master who... Uh, oh, okay, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'll look up there, and, you know, I'm, I'm a large, portly kind of dragonborn and looks at the ropes and the climbing that... Could he, he just like performed? It was like, no, no, 
And like, <laughs> go find the rest of the party. We'll figure this tree thing out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you have a question that you would like me to ask the master up top in the crow's nest, Saru? Sure. Um, just wondering how will we interact with the tree if we take Mr. Blue Veins and just like park him underneath it and pour some water on him or what what is there if there's a ritual or a ceremony or not so basically what does he know about the healing tree and the techniques you are needed to utilize its benefits i understand certainly it's a thing and malaku will climb up uh, do you want a climb check for that yeah it's just for fun uh That's acrobatics nice. would it be yeah. Okay. And that'll be a 13. 13. You don't get up quite as well as Kate okay. did, yeah. yeah. but you managed to get up no real issue. So uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, I've got some uh, quick questions for you, if you don't mind, while you continue to look out for oh, any yeah. possible dangers on the horizon. Oh, yeah, no, I'm keeping a, keeping a close eye out. How, how you are you look, doing, Malaku? Oh, I'm doing just great. You look uh, like you're doing a fine job. Uh, um, always. I understand that you have experienced and witnessed the healing tree. Is this correct? Oh, no, no, I, I haven't seen no. I've been to the Red Merrow Coast as a younger man. I was here. I don't, I imagine a great deal's changed, but the tree's only been about, say, 25, 25 years, something like that. So it was well before my, uh, I got, I left well before that came. Um, if I may, what, uh, what have you heard about this tree? Oh, well, I First heard... of all, its benefits. Well, from what I've been told, I it can cure any illness, any poison. Have you heard about if it's a required ritual or oh, any I, procedures that are required to do for the tree to do its magic healing? I'm not too sure. As far as I know, they just give you some sap from the tree. Sap from the tree. That's, and then that's... feed that to the patient? Is that what you're saying? I believe they do. I, I, there's some... You'll have to forgive me. There's some sort of a, like a religious. There was a religious group that helped run it, and they distribute it. But I, I don't know too much about it. Aye. Uh, well, thank you kindly, and good job on your lookout. No, if I, uh, if I spot anything that I remember, I'll, I'll be sure to let everyone know. Aye. So Malaku goes down and, and shares this information with the rest. So I was like, all right. So, But I don't believe religion is necessary. So, well... Gods can be fickle. We, we can discuss where magical healing trees come from, perhaps on the way. Um, but we secure some sap, sprinkle it on the sap, and he's saved. Let's Gee. say it. In she fair, turns so. towards Kingsman. She goes, "Have you ever been up top?" Uh, says, pointing up. No, no, it's um, <laughs> no. It seems not, not that I'm averse to heights. It's it's probably the motion, <laughs> the sway and the swell was probably not Come a on. good feeling for me. Come on. Oh, goes, oh, I, I see here. She says the view will calm your stomach more than you think. I I am not necessarily calm. Did you see that guy down there? He I had glowing Jen. blue veins and the skin peeled off of, off of his face. And what What's everyone that? seems to be concerned about is saving him. And no one seems mm. to be asking the question of should we be saving us? Wait, if he is the first Kingsman, one, are you sick? <laughs> If he is it, not, I hope I'll start checking around. He's turning if, blue. If if he is the first one to go to to be that far gone, and half the boat are also sick, maybe we should 
lock him in the room. So he is locked in the room like he's not. And, Dell's and how long he's before the others turn to a shade of blue? And she says, and Dell didn't say that it was contagious. And she goes, I don't think it is. She she can't p- pinpoint if it's <clears throat> contagious. Like she can't figure out what connection there could be for people to just catch it. Like there was people getting ill who was nowhere near the people who previously got ill. Yeah, it's contagious. We have 12 She's... people sick all at the same time, which is unprecedented. Uh, Hilda kind of... It's on what? It's unprecedented. She's not a doctor. She doesn't know. Saru okay. says yeah. Kadili, looking at you, because knowing you're a cook, could it be transmitted in what we eat? I'll be succinct. I suspect Gilly's food is, while succulent, might not be safe. I don't want to spread suspicion, but... Would you be able to see something that would be tainting the food? Or recognize it? Well, no, oh, maybe uh, maybe wait. the point is that you've actually got this guy who's turning blue with dead flesh peeling off right next to the kitchen. That's probably not very sanitary. I can only agree that that choice is poor, so... But when I tried to cure disease, it had no effect, which leads me to believe it is not food-based. As much as I would love to bring that gentle dragon down a speck. But what if what is being fed is not a poison or something you would ingest in that way? Are you being suggestive that they are feeding lies? Perhaps this is a godly-based disease anyway? Curses, Mm. she says. Curses always seem to do such things like this. I still believe it is a curse. So, Hilda... Oh, sorry, go on. But we're all eating the same food. Wouldn't we all be cursed already? You have all been eating the same food. As a note, I always adulterate mine. Mm. Just <laughs> I've literally been living off good berries for the past four months. <laughs> Spiced good berry? Mm. Spiced good berry. He, he gets good that six cobbler. pack off good berry diet. Nice. Nice. Um, so oh, as, you're, as you're having this conversation, uh, Hilda joined you. It's like, oh, uh, I think we're all discussing theories. Have, uh, have any of you got any theories? Drink more rum. It sounds like we need sap, regardless of the theory. So if we're only an hour away, I'd say we prepare to go ashore. I'm actually starting to see land, so we should actually be there rather soon. Wonderful. Um, I have sandwiches. And uh, if there is no line for a healing tree can we like make out what shore looks like by now like is it close enough that we can kind of see this city uh it's starting to get close enough and you you do start to see the odd shape of islands like it's mostly trees trees and that but um did you see kingsman go oh thank god <laughs> <laughs> Land. Oh, and yeah. Her will just kind of like smack him on the back a little harder than she probably should because sometimes she doesn't realize how hard she's. You, you, you knock, know, knock the bottle of rum out of my hands, it plunges into the water. Oh, Marie! I don't know where that came from. But, um, Hilda's kind of like, you know what? I still can't get this thought out of my head. Mm. We fought against those pirates and. My initial thought is that maybe they had some poison laced on their weapons. Do we have any weapons around? Clearly they're dead. That's the issue. We check them and no, there's no poison. There's nothing on them. And some people who fought them got sick and some people who didn't fight got sick. So it doesn't make any sense. Because I still say it's a curse of sorts. I don't know how or why, but there is something 
that is emanating this. For skin oh. to fall off like that in a day. That's that answer the question. Who who was first sick? Uh you you saw the one whose that face was, the, was the, falling the off. Blue... That was that was patient zero. <laughs> the, the blue dude. Patient zero. That that was looking some, like something out of an Indiana Jones movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing that popped into my head when you described it. it was like the it's like oh yeah. but what you are saying is the man in the room has chosen poorly. <laughs> <laughs> I see. As as she grabs the symbol on her neck, and you can see one side is a head of a coin and the other side is ahead of a coin. She goes, time war can be quite fickle sometimes. Hmm. Or luck, as you want to call it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Alex, real quick, give yourself yeah. an inspiration point for that reference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um. So you are actually getting closer to land, so... Oh, God. We get checked that. around. Did we check in the captain's quarters at all? My quarters? Um, you did. It came with the investigation, and uh, again, nothing mm. seems to like point out as alarming or relevant. Everything just looks the same. What um, what cargo are we carrying? Mm. Oh, oh, sorry, say that again. Oh, good question. Um, what 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 are we actually shipping? What are we transporting? What cargo right. are we? <laughs> well, we were transporting rum. That is true. Um, <laughs> We've been recently... drinking it all. King's been drinking it all. <laughs> you recently got back from a rum shipment, and there was a lot left over, surprisingly. So that's why you've got an abundance of rum. But you currently don't. You're not charting anything at the minute. I don't think we it? have an abundance anymore. No. <laughs> we have a mild fortune, not an abundance. <laughs> wow. You recently paid paid the crew and you made ship repairments from the uh, pirate attack. So you guys don't have a lot of gold on you right now. So when, when was the last time we made landfall? Um, before, so I'm assuming the pirate attack was the last time we actually interacted with anyone outside mm. the people who were already on the ship anyway. Yeah. Uh, how long before that was it that we was at port? Uh, say about a week. So are you, do you guys feel like you're, you're all good? Do you, do you need to speak to any more of the NPCs? He goes, Kadili says, Malaku, would you take the helm? I want to go back and see the patient again. Aye, Captain. As you wish. She goes, Very good. Seru, Erasmus, Erasmus, do you want to follow me down? I've got maybe an idea. Want is a strong word because the blue man freaks me out, but um, sure. She purposely goes down and and looks for Elena and says when she gets to her, Elena, do you know of any poisons, herbs, concoctions in the area that would cause any of these symptoms at all? I don't think I've not seen anything like this before. Mm. That's what's annoying me. I've been around a while and I've seen many things, but I have never seen this. So she goes, Do you have some leather gloves that I could use? I certainly do. She hands you a pair of leather gloves. Kadili goes in and then begins to just lift and look at different areas on the patient as gently as she can. She's not rough shot about it, but she's looking joints, different parts, and is going to use what natural understanding she has of nature things to try and understand where this started on the patient. The, like the source of like it's a if it was like a cut or anything mm-hmm. <laughs> as you start to feel up and down his body like you start to examine each movement seems like agony is like <gasps> mm-hmm. and it's like oh, but you can't see anything that's 
distinctively like he has no cuts. As far as you know, he didn't actually fight. So I'm going to use, if there's any implements here that I can use to open the mouth, I'm going to look inside at the tongue, the state of the tongue and the mm -hmm. roof of the mouth as well. Sure. So as you, you're actually making a medicine check, actually. All right. Um, that is a 15 plus. Let me look at my sheet here on the medicine. 116 altogether. Okay. So as you... That's it. You, you kind of glyphs like that opens his mouth. You're kind of taken back a bit by this the pure stench, mm. as the, all the teeth have more or less fallen out, or they are rotten to the core. Mm. <laughs> it's not a nice look. So, no. as he's doing this, and I watch him poke and prod um, patient zero. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to reflect a bit on kind of my religious training and thinking back of while Malaku is out of sight, I might mutter to myself, I might, you know, kind of uh, just think out loud and muse a bit. Um, what kind of, is, is, does this kind of affliction coincide with any of the world's gods or deities or known tricksters or demons or, you know, anything of that kind of sort that like there might be a story or learning from in this um, regard make a what should we say history check religion if you want if that's higher uh yeah because other it's a negative one. Oh, i got a three <laughs> so man he's really creeping me out like, yeah it's it's yeah. like as you're you was thinking this up as as she was opening up the mouth and you got oh. a strong whiff of that breath and you was like <sighs> I, I reach oh. into my coat and pull out some spice and kind of just like rub it under my nose. <sighs> That's taking it away. Uh, so, you uh, accidentally get pepper and you're just like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> am I going to turn blue? And I like excuse myself from the room and I stand right outside the door and just watch, uh, watch Kadili. So uh, Erasmus listening to this going, God, if I was in there, I'd need to make a constitution saving throw just personally. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not my character, but me. Good. Yep. Oh. So Erasmus, she motions you to come over and she notices the things in the mouth and she goes, Could it have started here? It looks like there's a bad set of decay here. Tongue, teeth. Mm -hmm. You notice that the tongue is black. Um, like so again, is black. So the, the teeth have fallen out. The mm -hmm. tongue has turned black. Is there anything that I'm aware of in nature that would cause that? Uh, you don't have to roll for it. There is nothing in nature that you could possibly think of that could even be anything like this are you, are you still looking at the jaw examining the yes the mouth yes okay so at a certain point he lets out a, a deep groan like, <clears throat> and he kind of jolts back a bit and before you know it a bit, half of his jaw just goes <clears throat> oh. unfortunate yes. at that yes. point i turn and I'm like mm. I think we're done here, or he's done here. Or we're all done. Very, not a very talkative fellow, is he? <laughs> Both and says that is necrosis of some sort. That is Jaws jaw do not come off like that. Uh, and and I'll a, it, get him starts to help. He's trying to put the jaw back. Pretty much. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> can, can we just can we just take a moment to to, to state the obvious now is. Look, I, I think I was right. I think it's time to address, you know, we were looking at a cure and I suggested lock the door and maybe we need to euthanize. <laughs> Jaws don't just drop off, but maybe we should destroy the brain. Just to be sure. As you say that, you start to get a blue vein going up your neck. You don't. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ah! Yeah, I, I make ready my spoon, and the spoon is like a giant, like, lunch lady almost paddle. Like, I mean, we're talking, like, probably, like, 
two and a half foot long with a broad end on it. I was like, it would be merciful. And I like wave it and I look at Kingsman and I'm like, is, is this where we are at, uh, Endel? Mal- Malaku, between looking at the ocean and seeing what happened with the uh, lower part of his face, all he hears is, dun it, dun it, dun it. <laughs> Jaws, Endel, what? <laughs> Endel kind of looks to the captain, like, gestures towards, like, I would really appreciate if I was left alone to work. I can get the brothers to load the cannon. Uh, She looks at Endel and says, Endel, I know that you work hard and you are a good ship surgeon. This I don't think you can fix. This is beyond most of us. At least let us wait for the tree. Let's see what our options are there. But if we don't know what the cause is, the tree may not be the answer. I can't wait. We may just be fueling the fire. It's going to be like the, uh, the Statue of Liberty. Tree. It's like really underwhelming. And, and just, yeah, exactly. Just, just, so Kadili says, you leave, but I think there's something more here that is unnatural. Where, so uh, just, just quick, when he's, when he's laying on the bed, is he covered up? So we're just examining his head and his arms. No, I examined his whole body. Right, okay. Yeah, he's, it's, it's kind of like a, He's, he's on top of the... No, it was some, something that uh, er- Erasmus said about um, something in nature. So if it's not a germ and if it's not ingested poison, it's not a curse, then is it something that's forced its way into his mouth, which has knocked out the teeth? So in which case, I was thinking of the thing ask. and check his body. I just want Steve, like, just Erasmus just to go... go. <laughs> that would make not, sense. No, the thing. You think a parasite. Not, not, yeah, not it's chest first. Yeah. If- Wrong film. Sorry. The thing, not the aliens. The thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, John Carpenter. <laughs> just, just tie up everyone <laughs> who's <laughs> sick. So the, the one thing I wanted to ask was, was it exactly that? So the damage on the mouth before the jaw fell off. That was that more severe than the rest of the body. Yes. And the teeth being missing were they broken? No, they've, they they've literally dissolved? they've dissolved and dropped out just for the pure oh. pure decay of him. Ah, ah, ah. Mary, every now and then, like. Okay, so this 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 is the body eating itself, and the reason for Ooh. for the heat is because the metabolism is so high. So that's even feeding energy into something, so like a parasite, or it's this is just the nature of the disease but if it is a disease there doesn't appear to be any transmission or, or common link between the people that have fallen ill not that you can so find... I'd lean more towards parasite then so Kadili is going to cast a presta dissertation on her gloves and mm-hmm. then take them off set them down she goes I like the idea of something being in there that's unnatural or a curse. I don't think this is a disease. At least not the normal sort. Okay, so as um, as you all usher out of the of Adele's uh, office, mm-hmm. she kind of like looks towards uh, Kingsman and so you kind of like shuts the door then you hear just a locking sound. No, you're not coming in to euthanize him. Of course, we may not find her alive later, but... <laughs> so, as but, you but were... be realistic. We're not getting him ashore. Oh, this no, one's the yeah. only way we're being allowed to ashore. With him. So, as you make your way back up to the top of the deck... You start to notice more of a distinctive land as you entering the Sparrow Isles within the Red Marrow Coast. You mm. begin to see how truly beautiful it is with its striking green islands and vibrant sea life. As you look out to the distance, you can spot two distinct statues of immense size separated by two islands, one wielding a pair of sickles and the other a bow. 
Gunther explains that they are the monuments of the historical heroes, the daughters of Adlina. Perhaps that's worth a visit someday. Mm. As the ship pushes forward, you unmistakably spot the great healing tree. Its colossal size is almost spanning the width of the island it rests upon. Though its leaves have a stunning yellow hue, they don't appear to be as vibrant as the tales suggest. So hold on. Erasmus, or no, sorry, Malaku. Um, right. The, the gentleman up, up top, I don't know, I've never gone up there. Was it gone for, um, he said this tree grew in 25 years or less. Aye. According to him, yes. Hmm. It does not seem reasonable. I take it that's what you're thinking, because I concur. Truly a work of the gods, then. And I turn and leave Malaku <laughs> with a smile. <laughs> and Malaku shakes his head. God's got nothing to do with it. It's just abstract nature. <laughs> If he could fertilize it. I start like trying to find the closest uh, uh, rowboat so that we don't actually like go to dock or whatnot. And, uh, hmm. well, well, actually, as you <laughs> as you actually get closer, you actually wave to come closer and encourage to go on the dock. And um, you take a moment to think, yeah, you know what? We'll risk it. It'll be safe. We'll keep them, everyone down below. Uh, but as you pull into the dock, you cannot help but notice how quiet it is. Well, on closer inspection, you see that ships are being turned away. You are then flagged by what looks to be a guard, and you are instructed to dock where they are. As mm -hmm. the remaining crew hands secure the boat, you make your way over to the guard, joined by Hilda. Mm -hmm. So... Adorned in a distinctive blue armor with a silver trim. These are what you believe to be the king's guard. So as you walk over to him, he kind of just goes, pulls out a, a scroll. Mm -hmm. Greetings, travelers and or travelers. We regret to inform you that the tree and its healing properties are currently unavailable at this time. We apologize for any distress that this may cause, and we are doing everything in our power to correct the situation. If you have any issues, please address them to me. Your name here, member of the King's World Guard. You, you suspect he's read that many times. Mm. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> sounds like a script to, to me. Space. Absolutely. She goes, Hail, good person, good soldier. I appreciate your advice to us and your codes. However, we need to dig in a little deeper here as to whether we can gain a moment of, of your leader's time. Would that be possible? As stated before, the tree isn't working at the moment. If you have any sick, you'll have to take them elsewhere. I believe the Raven Islands has set up a makeshift medical camp. Let's just try there. Um, I will say, Rick, if you want to do a persuasion check to try oh, and encourage yeah. this. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, yeah. And then I roll a 16 plus 3 is 19. So you kind of like, you stress the situation like, look, we are in a really, I say, you kind of like, uh, right. you kind of like, me, re, uh, leans in, he's like, well, between us, the tree's infected. Been took over by a weird rot. That's making people sicker rather than curing them. We've got the How sisters so? looking into it. How so? Were, were there symptoms or signs that, that showed up? Well, as, as he's about to answer, he's kind of tapped on the, uh, tapped on the shoulder by another guard. Mm -hmm. And um, he kind of points towards a woman in a distinct golden cloak. Sister Mayflower would like to see them. Oh, uh, well, kind of looks up and down like they don't look anything special. But he's like, farewell, 
Very well. Uh, seems that the sister wants an audience with you. You better no go problem. see her. She says as she puts both hands to cup his, and in her hand is two gold, and she leaves those into his hands. She oh. says, thank you so much for being Thanks. so understanding. Thank you kindly. He kind of like tucks away. And the other guy that like points it out to me, he kind of like leans over and he's like putting the two in his jacket immediately, like, no, I'm not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> to the jilted guard as we pass and I kind of nod at him, I hand him a sandwich. Like, <laughs> yeah. Weirdly enough, like uh-huh. he's more excited about the sandwich. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. like, it's a good <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Give him a nod. Yeah. So, right. So, mm. as you approach before you is an elegant female elf with brown skin and thick auburn hair adorning a long golden and hooded cloak. Upon her forehead is a tattoo depicting the symbol of Adelina. It's, uh, it's like a, a tree branch going down. So, there we go. Sister, thank you for taking This would be Saru's or um, Erasmus's realm, wouldn't it? Absolutely. She goes, one of our members would like to talk with you a little more about why we would like to spend time talking with you on what's going on. So she kind of takes a, a, a slight bow. It's like, greetings, travelers. May a healing light find you on this dark day. I thank you for granting me an audience. I am Priestess Mayflower. And may time more bless you and all that you do. So, and she um, turns towards Erasmus and nods. <laughs> <laughs> So, as I'm sure that you've been made aware, the great tree no longer holds her healing light. An unnatural rot has infected her roots with a devastating effect. If you could follow me, I believe it'd be best to show you. Hmm. So, as she guides you through the... Uh, it's kind of like a shipping town, if you will, like, mm -hmm. for the looks of it. There's lots of cabins and everything, and she guides you to the largest cabin. So as you are guided in, you are welcomed with the familiar smell of decay. And to your horror, you find yourself in the presence of a dying woman, her skin appearing to melt off with a familiar blue glow in her veins. She reaches out to you before involuntarily dropping her hand. Hilda is taking aback, fashioning a look of guilt and shame in her eyes. This, this can he be? I, I have to find out who brought this onto our ship. I promise you, Captain, I'm going to find out. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Do you know this woman, Hilda? No, I don't know this woman, but look, that's clearly what's going on with the ship. It's clearly not ours, then. It beat us here. We didn't do this. That's what I need to figure out. Please, please, Captain, let me go back to the ship and find out properly how this got onto us. Of course, Hilda. Be careful. You are so, very valuable to us. Hilda goes off. Would any of you like to join her? No. I... <laughs> Malaku will. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, Kadili nods. Malaku will. At it, Malaku with a knowing look of keep an eye on her. <laughs> yep. Aye, Captain. I, I'm, I'm also curious. Now I'm on, the, now I'm on land. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling and... better. So I would, feeling um, a bit better, are you, and... Kingsman? Uh, let, let's see what she's. Um, let's see what she's up to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we carry on with the story currently going on, uh, we'll cut off to the ship and to Hilda's investigation and your own investigation. So as right. she goes in, she's rummaging around the patient zero's items and everything. Which they had done previously. Mm -hmm. But this time she acquires a, a flask, which they'd seen before, but when they open the flask this time, it, there's a rotten smell coming from the glass. Flask. You take a sniff and it's got a familiar smelling rotten decay. And then for the crew members that are able to talk, you ask them, do they, do they recognize this? Do, have they seen this? And they mentioned that patient zero essentially 
after the pirate fight, fight in wanting to help the ones who got injured, offered this to help heal them. He said it was yeah. a healing toxin that could help with the wounds. Little did he know that wasn't up to scratch. Hilda is incredibly frustrated with herself because she's usually on the ball with vetting the uh, the crew hands, knowing where they've been, what they've done in the past. He failed to mention that he'd recently travelled to the Red Mirror Coast and got some of the healing sap. <laughs> but if the healing sap was already infected, he could have brought it back. That's, mm. that's the understanding. So as checked before, the healing sap didn't seem to be infected just yet. So there wasn't any cause for alarm. So it didn't really cross anyone's mind. But from what you can gather on the information, Hilda essentially, or oh, this patient zero essentially with good intentions, tried to help others, and it's backfired terribly. That does confirm that it's not contagious if it was only the people that have drunk of mm -hmm. the sap and people in this town that have interacted with a tree that have caught a disease. So it means, for the moment, the rest of us are okay. We aren't at risk of becoming ill. I agree. So... Before we carry on, would you say this is a good time for a break, Dave? Yep, we can take a quick five minute break there for everyone. Please. Yeah, anything okay. you wanna anything you wanna add there, Ben or uh no, just uh if you can go check on the link, check check on the Patreon, see what it has to offer. Absolutely. There's so much into this book that we might not even get into, but it's something for your own adventures. Oh, cool. Be good. Right, we're gonna and, run and, the and the link. Sorry, and the link is up in chat as well. So uh, the Patreon yeah. link is there. If you'd like to follow it, uh, there to are any in the room, I would say do check this out. I mean, Ben's work, as you can see behind me, and all these tokens and everything that's done. This is all his, and he's done other work for my campaigns with um, NPCs and done a tremendous job on the artwork. So don't miss out on that. If nothing else, that's a start to get you in to take a look because it's some amazing stuff. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have Rick constant. Like, don't even ask me. Rick sells you need, it. You need a soundbite. <laughs> it's true. I'm telling you. It's just... You need, you no. need that as a soundbite. Soundbite. Right. Uh, Steve D's already gone, so we better, we better catch up. So we're gonna get a drink, yeah. grab a snack, and we'll see you back in five minutes. I'm gonna run the trailer for everybody watching. Perfect. Yeah. All right. See you in a bit. Can you hear that? The call for adventure. Well, what are we waiting for? Become a legend of the sea in the Red Marrow Chronicles, an ongoing campaign for 5th edition. Explore its exotic and diverse isles, making friends along the way, and no doubt, a few enemies. All while gaining access to hand-drawn battle maps, character art, and tokens. Not to mention keeping players on their toes with the ever-growing book of Encounters Most Random. All this and more in the Northern Wildlink. Start your adventure today.
and we're back. Um, we just had to take and a quick, quick break. And you all died. Oh no! <gasps> did I did I not have the camera on? Oh no! That that uh, fight was incredible, guys. Oh it my was, gosh! Yes. <laughs> yeah, I put he man to shame. <laughs> um, so we we just had to go grab a quick drink, uh, potty break, grab a snack. Um, but we're just going to take a quick quick couple of minutes. Ben, just tell people about uh, who you are, what you do, what is Red Marrow about. And how can people how can people support you and find you? Okay, so my name is Ben Edwards. You can find me on Twitter at Ben at Ben Edwards Tunes, which will be in the link below, I believe. And uh, essentially, I am also Northern Wildling, which is a new Patreon page up to support and help people with their homebrew games. Really, I'll provide content for tabletop RPGs. This includes tokens, character art, maps, encounter ideas. And not, not just fake idea. These are fully fledged ideas. So say, if you just wanted a quick night, you for the for the very rare chance you've managed to get all your players together, and you've got a couple of hours, fill those hours with some of these encounters. Just have a fun night of it. Because I personally know how difficult it is to get all your players together. I'm sure Dave is very well aware how difficult that is. How he does it every week. <laughs> hey, we do it every week. They, 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 I punish my players if they don't turn up. That's that's what it is. <laughs> that's the trick. They they are no off the Christmas you. card list. That's it. No XP for you. <laughs> yeah. No XP. You do not go up a level. That's right. <laughs> you do not go on the list to begin with. <laughs> yeah. The shame is something was to happen to your character. Oh, that's always bad. So, yeah. essentially, the more people who back this, the more time and effort I can put into this. And I have so many ideas. I have so many stories to tell. And this is, for me, trying to find my way to being able to do that full-time. Because I, I work full-time with a day job. I do this when I can. But I promise you, the content there is mwah, it's fantastic. And I would love to share with you guys. Cool. Now we also mentioned um, just as we were we were during the break, um, you're also doing a giveaway. Certainly am. So to help celebrate Red Morrow Chronicles and celebrate the launch of Northern Wildling, for anyone who backs Patreon to the Captain tier or higher within the next couple of weeks, as we celebrate this campaign, I'm going to throw in a free character custom uh, character commission. So wow. I'm sure as Rick will be able to vouch oh, for me, yeah. I'll be able to draw your character and make them look amazing. Real rocket. Yes. I can vouch for that too, because he's done some work for Lost Lights and it has been absolutely amazing. And then he did a chibi and I'm like, yeah, I want a chibi. I just want chibi. How can you not want that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Agreed. Saying. Now, if, uh, if you are watching us live, if you have a question for Ben at any time, um, just pop it into into live chat. Type question and then add your question. And Steve, who is playing Erasmus, will pick it out and we'll just we'll just interrupt the story a little bit, maybe an opportune moment, and we'll just kind of uh, ask Ben and get you the answers that you need. Okay. So everybody happy? Everybody happy to jump straight back in? Oh yeah. Uh, hey. Okay, Ben, over to you. There you go. So as the others went off with Hilda to discover how this disease ended up on your ship, the rest of you are guided by a few guards and Mayflower to the bottom of the Great Healing Tree, which you should be able to see now. So Mayflower, when did this all begin? Was there a certain thing or, or event that happened that caused the tree to rot so as you see May mayflower is up on the screen now that's that's how she looks so as you asked her that she's uh i'm afraid this has gone on for two weeks it started quite small to begin with we hadn't no noticed the difference but mm. i'm afraid it's just been getting worse and worse so uh, my fellow sisters are doing what we can to look into it to see if we can help heal her, but I feel not. So as you look to the side, you spot a couple of sisters, mm -hmm. not too dissimilar to Mayflower, except they're wearing green cloaks. Quite similar, but mm. just not as fancy. Is there a notation with, with the colours of your cloaks? I noticed that 
yours is a golden and theirs is a green. Um, it's just how it, it's always been for us. We, I am the high priestess, so they essentially make us wear the golden ones. It doesn't mean anything that I'm special. It's just what we wear. She, she's kind of embarrassed by that. You'd assume like, oh, God, so you're special? Like she's like, oh, no, God, I don't feel like that way. I, I, I have a slightly different question. Mm -hmm. Why did you seek an audience with us? Well, you all look like a capable sort. Um, you see, the great healing tree is under the king's protection. And as you can see, the guards are doing what they can to help. But unfortunately, we haven't got enough to help protect the tree and protect the sisters from, dare I say, the angry visitors who can't access the tree. I'm, I was hoping you could look into finding what could cause this. When you say angry visitors, what do you mean? Have you I mean, had battles or people who've tried to hurt you? Not me personally, but I am afraid to report one of the visitors tried to attack one of the sisters when she was unable to help him. That is the unacceptable. The swiftly dealt with him. Good. But... I'm afraid we haven't got enough guards to really look into it beyond it, the tree. So we need to hire guards. I, I mean, but if, if, if is this attack related simply to the sickness? No, to, it's, to... it's an alternative sickness. They were basically turned away because the the guards basically said, look, the tree's not working. You've got to take your sick elsewhere. And there was like, no. So this guy's pretty much grabbed one of the sisters and said, you need to heal, heal my wife now. And when she said she couldn't, he kind of like kicked off. Respect to the sisters. Um, but we can't help the tree by keeping angry or disappointed oh, no. or frustrated away. That That's what the guards are currently doing. I, we would need you to adventure out and branch out a bit more. Uh -huh. Apologies uh -huh. for my uh -huh. pun. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Erasmus, so, do you detect fight. any issues? Can you tell from your skills what may be causing this problem with the healing tree? Um, my my abilities lie in battle more than communing with plants and nature, but I can certainly use my skills. Um, that is what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, I, I'm not a religious druid. By all means, ha have a look around. You have full access. I think Kingsman can help us there with that. With his skills. He's quite skilled on land. And we have a quite stalwart group between Malaku and Mirazara and with Erasmus. And Seru and myself can work if there's anything that could be poisoning the source. I start walking around and picking up deadfall like sticks, like I'm picking up firewood and just like tucking it under my arm. I'm like, mm -hmm. um, Malaku is also going to look around to see if something seems out of the ordinary. Okay, so you want to make uh, an investigation check? Investigation? Mm -hmm. I certainly Can will. Can you wait either with my aid? Yeah. I, I'm going to clap him on the shoulder quickly as I cast guidance. Yeah, my investigation does not uh, give anything with a five total. You're getting assist tonight, so you can do it with advantage? Oh, with advantage? Mm -hmm. All right. Get an extra D4 as well. In that case, uh, with an extra D4, two, that will give me a 20 total. Very nice. 
So as you go to the bottom of the tree, you notice it is heavily discolored with a brown rotted, a brown veiny pattern reaching upwards. As, as you look a bit closer, you see that the veins are slowly moving. As like they're alive. Further up the tree. In the tree? Not so yeah. much alive. Like it doesn't seem to be any consciousness going on. But you, you notice that it seems to be just going up and looks ever so slightly higher on the tree. You place your hand closer and there's an an unnatural pulsing of heat emitting from its roots. You kind of like start to follow the rot down the tree and you notice that there's a small trail leading off from the tree. And as you follow this trail, you notice that it's... It, it, seems to be leading to this clearing in the woods and you think, hmm, mm. must be coming from that direction. So from the investigation, it's definitely coming in from the roots and it's infecting the tree from, from the ground up. So this is not anything that's that's been put in the tree at the top. It's, it's coming from either the ground water or, or from somewhere else. It's dirty work. So you found the root of the problem. We found the root of the problem. <laughs> I, was, I was getting there in the end. You already have inspiration point. <laughs> Time to stalk away. Can I give it to Steve? To last since, yeah. he, since he was uh, oh, getting Steve, there yeah. in the end. <laughs> Certainly can. You know what? I love it. So, <laughs> Kadili is going to do knowing that if this is a living thing and it's evil, she's going to hit one of the veins going back towards the source with sacred flame to see what that does to it. There's just a friend <laughs> like, testing shit on this tree. <laughs> so, so the veins, like, are the veins part of the roots? Or are the veins their own thing? No, it's, it's kind of like a layer of, like, like goo, if you oh. will. It's it's oh. not, but it's 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 uh, it's not so it's not slimy. If you touch it, it'll like it's like goo. It, it, so it's kind of like if I try to scoop it up with like the end of my spoon, does it behave like Ghostbuster goop? Yeah, that's so what I was just thinking. Not, yeah. like, not more. <laughs> like you know, not quite. For what it's at right now, it's kind of like crusty. Ooh, okay. So it's not ectoplasm. <laughs> Yeah. So doing the green sacred flame as she puts her hand down and it springs out and goes down with the green holy light and hits the root or the area where the poison is, it would do four points if this is a true living source. What the tree or oh, are you would it that's it's a tricky one. The tree, this is going just, she's trying to target uh, just the goop. Nothing okay. else. So as you do this, uh, the guards kind of like start to pull the swords out and then Mayflower kind of like spreads around like, let them do this. Because obviously they have no access to Oh yeah, to these this is a powers. holy tree. I don't want to burn the tree. Just want to burn as the you, goop. As you really show them, the guards kind of put the swords away. But as you do this flame, the, you definitely get a reaction from the from the rot as it mm -hmm. starts as as the flame starts to burn it starts to like go from this crusty and more gloopy and it starts to like like almost come alive if you will <laughs> as it does its best to try to cover over the flame to stop it mm -hmm. it didn't react well to doing that this is a living source she says trying to poison your tree i believe oh. and if it's living and if it's been here for a while it would seem to me simple it needs sustenance mm -hmm. if it bleeds we can kill it perhaps or we can offer it food in another manner we don't necessarily need to kill it or we can that. kill it <laughs> Man, we kill it. <laughs> it's Solutions killing the tree and, and other people. Life. Perhaps unintentionally. If you're starving, you kill what you find. 
if someone offers you something you prefer to eat, maybe you eat that instead. Mm. I'm so saying what you're saying is find something that this so-called disease would be more enticed by than the tree. I'm Why? not saying Correct. we don't kill it. I'm saying let's understand it a moment until it tries to kill us. Eh, let me know when we're killing it. <laughs> then Kinsman. kill it. Can you make a perception check real quick? Me, yeah? Mm-hmm. Boop, 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 boop. Whoops. Oh, I can't! It's the first roll and I've got a natural one. Oh, no! <laughs> That's a four in total. Never four in total. You, you, you didn't notice anything. You noticed your feet. Do you have any that. inspiration, Dave? Nope. Oh, nope. no. Be, being so grossed out by the goop, <laughs> is probably just like... <laughs> Between that and the residual seasickness. It's, it's, the, it's the hangover from hell. You're, you're um, still coming, you're like, you're what? Still around, oh. You're like, oh, God, no. You want me to do what? <laughs> Look at what? The sun so is up is, there. So, Ben, this is going out from the tree towards where you were saying, correct? Yes, correct. Um, I will say, as you did that flame, you kind of look back towards the tree and you notice that the rot as rot's reach has got like a foot higher. Right mm -hmm. after you did what you just did, so you towards thinking, towards oh. the tree, not towards the path. No, towards the tree. Okay, like you started to reach higher up the tree. So how is how... trying to combat or or react to being pushed away? Say that again, sorry. It, it's basically trying to react and go higher and latch in more mm -hmm. because we're trying to push it away from the source. It sounds yeah. it sounds more like the like venom, the symbiote that kind of attachment yeah. to it yeah it's it, oh. it wants more it doesn't want to let go but you mentioned the trail going off into the forest are we it can i you know are we looking at stuff is how evident is that is that is that tracks or is that where the stuff is and it's moving to the tree it's you uh it's it, it seems to be moving towards the tree from that direction like there seems to be a tri a small faint trail leading away from the tree, so you think this, this could lead to somewhere. Can I, can I make oh. a... Do I need to make a tracking check, or can we follow it pretty easily? Yeah, and she's for, um I will say, do you want to speak to any of the NPCs to learn a bit more about the area? Yeah. Um, going to one of the guards, Kadili says, uh, I'm sorry for startling you. I meant no harm to the tree. But we have to understand more of what's going on. What is that way oh, so quickly themselves. get a picture of her oh. so as you approach her it's not a problem um, in that direction I believe it is the old Greyfell Manor Greyfell Manor it's, it's an old dilapidated building hmm Does it have a story? I sense a story. Yes. Is there a story? Um, have you ever heard of Greyfell Chemicals? Mm. Uh, does anyone have any proficiency in al al alchemy or who's got the highest history? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Wait for it. Nope. <laughs> Wait for uh, it. Negative one. Plus four. I got a plus four. Plus zero. Zero. Oh. Sounds like it's, that's it. I guess zero. It's the captain. Intelligence was a dump stat in this so That's why he's, a, she's the captain. A 12 plus a 4 on that, so it'd be a 16 altogether. 16, right. So from what you remember, that name does ring a bell, and you're like, oh, I've heard that before. That's right. It, it used to be the brand of a toxin and poison company. Called, oh. called Greyfell, but that you don't remember having to see any of their products in a while. Last, last you heard, like that they went bust. Like no, you don't get any product from them anymore. So you're like, hmm, very weird. Like, but you recognise them to be, to be a, 
a famous family at one point that would make poisons and toxins, but they no longer do so. So I'll ask the guard, um, I appreciate you letting us know that. Whatever happened to the Greyfells themselves? Are they oh. still there? I do not know. I've not really seen or heard. It's it's an old mansion, but we all work, so it's not like we can go and see it. Hmm. But no, I, I I haven't been here that long, so I don't know much about the Greyfell. Um, she kind of no ushers. More. She right. ushers one of the guards over, mm -hmm. who's been there longer. Sebastian, do, do you know anything of the Greyfell family? Greyfell family? Well, not much anymore. The, since the healing tree came, the, it kind of just burst and didn't need to be around no more. Can't exactly sell poisons if the cure's right next door. Unless you poison the cure, and then all of a sudden the business takes off again, yes? I, first, uh, no one's heard from Greyfell in many years. I don't even know if he's there anymore. Any people that worked there or benefactors or investors? None. It's been gone for 20 years. Anyone Nothing left their, of it. Anyone made their way up there that you know of? Or strange no. happenings? Not really, no. We've... Uh... Obviously, we do patrols, but nothing takes out. It's, it's an old, dilapidated building now, so there hasn't been much reason to go there. Mm. Well, looking at the crew, she cheers up and goes, well, we got our destination. <laughs> creepy <laughs> mansion it is. <laughs> while, while they're talking about the creepy mansion, I'm going to, like, poke at the goo a bit more, and, like, uh, I'd like to try to dig under it and see if it goes, like, down into the ground, and if so, how far down into the ground. So as you Sorry. dig a little deeper, you start to notice like it's it goes from this crusty shell to a more fluidy, gooey like like the ectoplasm. It got mm. it turns more into that, and the heat alone you can feel like if I touch this, it's gonna hurt. Okay. So you kind of take a moment to stop, and it's like okay. Well, and I'm using my spoon. Like I'm not I'm not oh, getting my hands okay. anywhere near it. Like I'm just digging <laughs> at it to see if it goes down into the dirt. Uh, and how, how deep it might go. Saru, you are going to wash that spoon before you make our meal. <laughs> That's exactly correct? what I was about to say. <laughs> it, adds, no, it, adds no it adds flavor. Pudding. It may be very worrying to understand, but sometimes the best flavors come from suspicious roots. You mean rot? At times. Okay. You heard of cheese? <laughs> That's all it is. I, I would imagine <laughs> that perhaps cheese looks differently. Um, it's an infected cheese. It could be. So, so Sarah, you, you want to try the blue goo that has the person on our ship had his jaw fall off, yes? I feel you've jumped ahead a few steps. I'm okay, simply I'm, interested. I'm just checking. She says, I, I value my crew and my friends. I, and I, I ladle some up and kind of just like hold it out as like, if... if some people, offering, but no, no, none for me. Some just, people can't handle the spicy foods. That's true. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> a little too so, exotic for my taste. So you talk to the guards. Would, uh, would anyone like to speak to any of the sisters? Rasmus, since you are kind of our or Malaku, since you are two of our more religious or a religious sort. <laughs> Believe it or not, my devotion of service is uh, inherently tied to my deity. And uh, give her as she is, um, I could also talk to them, I guess. As uh, long as you don't suggest they eat the blue goo. <laughs> I mean, mysterious ways. Mysterious okay. ways. Malaku is going to defer to Erasmus because Malaku doesn't really believe in deities. He believes in key being the energy that binds us all. So he may offend if they say something religious. So Erasmus, over to you. <laughs> so I am also not religious, but uh, I oh. have more decorum than you do. 
So as you oh, walk over sorry. to the table over This is here. just absolutely amazing. And a small dumpster fire maybe between oh, yeah, the I'll, group. I'll, I'll wander on over um, and look at what's on the table and like put down the deadfall that I'd kind of gathered and uh, look around. And um, from my pack, uh, I pull out a bit of uh, a a pot and a giant lid that um, for a moment covers my, you know, arm and forearm a bit like a shield. Mm -hmm. um, like it's like, it, it looks like it's, it'd be about that big. It's like, hmm, and I put that down. I was like, I know it's probably uncouth, but uh, is there a water supply? I'd like to, you know, if we've got a moment, I could start making something. You got a moment to uh, talk about your experience here, sister, and the tree and its situation? Um, as, as one of them kind of gestures to go get some water, uh, the other is like, um, oh, um, what, what, sorry, what did you ask her? Um, just uh, the, any anything that you've noticed, perhaps of a um, more insightful kind than the other locals or my, my crew. Um, well, in case you felt uncomfortable by their by their jabs and jibes. Um, so Mary quietly, Kadili says, "Keep an eye on him. If he makes them eat the goo, you know what to do." <laughs> <laughs> so as you as you look on the table, you see there's um, a few v vials of the goo. There's uh, some golden leaves with the rot, seeing how it, they're trying to figure out how it mm. works. And she kind of says, uh, um, it appears that her heaving light no longer is held in the tree and it's it's worrying. It's not something we ever expected to happen. Well, sure, but you can't cure it from a table here. Um, you know, uh, has have you been in touch with your... Uh, Mother Nature, or perhaps oh, another spirit, or Ad Adlina. Well, Adlina is the goddess of health and purity. Great. She is our deity. Um, is she not talking to anyone? Well, or... perhaps more context. Um, Twenty-five years ago, during the twin moon eclipse, the sisters of Adlina collectively prayed to their goddess, who answered their prayer gifting them with the great healing tree, uh, which has continued to grow to this day. Um, you, you see, if, every 27 years, the twin moons form an eclipse that creates a gateway from the astral plane to ours, allowing a stronger connection with the gods. Okay. Normally, her voice only reaches the certain few as she gestures to Mayflower. But we f we can sense her presence in other ways, and the warmth of the way we can heal people. We feel her presence, as, as we all do. And have you no way to commune with her otherwise? Sadly, it is beyond my power. All right, I, you, I whistle um, and see if I can get the uh, 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 sister Mayflower's attention, and just kind of beckon her over. If, yeah, uh, she she comes over. How, how may I assist? Just, just oh. to ask a question mm -hmm. before we move on to Mayflower. You, you said there that you hear her voice, the goddess's voice, and you feel her power in different ways in 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 the ability to that you have to heal. Are you saying that you've lost the ability to heal since the tree became sick? You don't hear from your goddess at all anymore. You have no magic. We still, I can still feel her presence, but we have, we haven't got our own healing capabilities. I'm, I'm no cleric, but ever since this rock came, the tree sat, poisons anyone who takes it, and we've we've prayed, and sadly, it can't get through to Adelina. Sister, has Adelina, she she harmed the family that had the poison business in a sense, yes, by growing uh, up and giving the cures? 
Not, not, not intentionally. Um, of course. The tree was never designed to ruin anyone. Um, you see, the king of Red Marrow, uh, King Bolo, mm -hmm. he is a follower of Adelina, and well, he believed that the, the tree was a gift from her. So he declared that its healing capabilities are free to anyone who may need them. Including those who would have been on the receiving side of the poison? Of course. Hmm, yes, that would make them quite ineffective then in the selling of their poisons. Do you think that maybe they're trying to slowly or someone who met with them? poison I, I'm not goddess too tree. sure again it was 25 years ago uh, no one's heard or seen of the Greyfell family in decades if they have anything to do with this I can't think how did they have any relatives outside of this area not that I'm aware of no hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you. We, we, we appreciate your candor. Sure. That. That's ahead. So, would you guys like to follow the trail? I, I interrupted Siri. So oh, sorry. he was going to ask me. Yes, Siri was going to talk to them. Oh. Yeah, it's just. I'm just Sister Mayflower. It's customary to speak to your goddess and. Uh, your sister spoke of such communion capable through you. Does Adelina speak to you? Occasionally. Has she... Not through words. Okay. Um, often she will speak to me through nature. I, I may ask her a question. and, For example, say if if something good is to happen or the answer is yes or no, like I will feel a warm breeze or a cold breeze. It's, it's not a, always clear, but I know in my heart that it's her. Have you spoken of if this is man-made or divine or otherwise, as far as the contagion? Sadly, her voice has been silent. I pray and I ask, and n nothing seems to happen. And and as all this has been going on, um, and the water has come back, I've been kind of just like absentmindedly with my hands, putting ingredients coming from seemingly uh, underneath my cloak uh, just into that <laughs> pot as a small fire heats up. I was like, we're going to go down that trail now and take a look. But... Uh, let this simmer for oh. about 20 minutes to half hour and we'll be, uh, you'll be rewarded with something nutritious and hearty. Take warm, okay. take heat, Thank take you for your sustenance. kindness. We'll be back. The gods um, oh. are very into this. And, and, and he like reaches over and grabs the pot lid and is like, it'll be fine on an open simmer and uh, <laughs> uh, leaves the rest. Bon appetit. Yes, and as Malaku is. leads off down, he's just mumbling himself, God's me ass. <laughs> right, before you guys leave, um, mm -hmm. you spot Endel and Phil off in the distance. As they approach closer, Phil is looking extremely worried and nervous, and Endel kind of approaches. Um, I thought I should let you know that another member of our crew is now ill. Um, Bill is starting to show signs of infection. And Phil kind of like comes up saying, oh, if, if you guys can uh, find a way to save him, I, I, I don't want to lose my brother. Did Bill leave the ship at all since we've come here? Nope. So Kadili comes up and touches his hand and says, do not worry. We believe we know where to look for the issue. Good. But, um, he kind of wipes a tear away. Don't, don't, don't let him know that I was worried. I don't want him thinking I'll 
of cared course. about or anything. Of course. <laughs> we'll hmm. restore you to where you'll be arguing over cannonballs again, really soon. Thanks, Cap. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get back to work. He kind of like rushes off. You need help with the cannonballs? Yeah. That's okay. Kind of was, uh, and Al leans in. It's like, as much as those two infuriate me, I don't want to see any of them go. Mm. In my way, I do care for them. And they are good kids. Of course, Endow. And we believe we have found a beginning of where the source is and what it could be. Fantastic. We will return soon once we have answers, and we will make it as quickly as possible to not lose any crew members if we are able. As you were. Uh, she kind of uh, walks away back to the tent. She conveys with the sisters, find out what they know. So yeah. are you guys heading off to the trail we blaze? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, we look at the crew and says, it's time to kick ass. Terry, you'll get to understand. use a little bit of your skills. And Kingsman, I believe you'll be using a lot of your skills. Let's hope so. Uh, I will also take point. Of course. I'll skip, says, skip on ahead. <laughs> so you travel on for, say, a good few hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, traveling through the decaying woods, you feel a great, great unease. Mm. Mm. so i'm going to try to tap into my fey and feel if it's just wrong the whole nature here is wrong As oh, if... it's it's definitely wrong <laughs> there's I, so much it, wrong there is so <laughs> much wrong so come mm. through the decaying woods you feel a great unease is something watching you you pause for a moment surveying the area Nothing catches your eye, but there's there's just this uncomfortable silence in the air. But suddenly you feel the ground below you begin to rumble, becoming more intense as the ground begins to warp beneath the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, beneath your feet. Mm -hmm. You jump back just in time as the ground below you comes up alive in a hulking mass. Oh, God. Mm -hmm in a hulking mass of veins and tendrils. Okay. Just uh -oh. uh, copy this, get this up on. Into like a pronounced form, I'm guessing. Oh, yes. Oh, As you yeah. just jump away, uh, it turns into Ooh. a corrupted shambling mold. As it comes up, it goes... <laughs> <laughs> and roll for somebody initiative. stayed at the family picnic too long. <laughs> well, uh, roll I think for initiative. We thoroughly piss something off. <laughs> All right, let's see. Ooh. Twenty-two Kingsman. Ooh. Eight yeah. for Saru. Seven for Kadili. Twenty-one. Twenty for Malik. Seven for Rasmus. Sorry, 10 for Erasmus. So, say that again. So, anyone, like, so who got 21? I got 22. 22? So, it'll be Kings when next. Where are you? Oh, God. So, give me two seconds. No Just uh, putting the ad to turn order in. Who got. Lower at 21. 21. Then who's after that? Malaku with a 20. Go with a 20. Some high rolls. Yeah. Some high rollers over here, man. High rollers. <laughs> Until it actually like really matters. Oh, yeah. And wait, then we crap, roll crap. like crap. <laughs> Initiative, natural 20, roll to hit, one. <laughs> Damage, double <Yes>. one. <laughs> or this one and two. Me. I normally have to put everything into initiative because I roll like gunk in initiative usually. <laughs> Get the alert, fate. 
Actually, I can use one. my inspiration. Can I not here if I wanted to, Ben? Yeah, sure. Can we roll it? Oh, yeah, by all means. Because I like I don't dislike a seven, but I like a well, seventeen better. <laughs> Plus one eighteen. Well, as we say in the north, better than a boot in the earth with a frozen muck luck by. <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, so so what did you get, Rick? Sorry? An eighteen. Is eighteen. Well so so is that the best. next one or did someone get higher than an eighteen? I got twenty-two. Oh, no, no, you already yeah. I think he means after Malik, who's 20. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Everyone, it's single digits. Any takers? Single digits. All right. Parseru. <laughs> 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 I'm coming along. And actually, as the ground was starting to rumble, I was like, you know, I'd love to use divine sense to kind of get a 60 foot bubble of uh, evil and otherwise things that might be around me, or if it's just whatever just burst forth oh yep there it is there it is <laughs> i think uh, i figured that one out <laughs> we'll say over uh over over systems are available this is not working for me oh, i have a little nap for this what, are you, what are you trying to to do ben just add them to the yeah, to order. There we go. That, so roll, roll twenty kind of set up to where if you have the icon on there and you click the auto roll, it does it for you. Whereas putting it in by hand's not easy. No, <laughs> not the most. Oh, fun. it's just I'm just clicking the. Because um, yeah, you usually have one player that didn't click their icon before they were holding it, then you got to oh, put it in manually. So, oh, right. I manually rolled mine too. So yeah, no, it's just fine. I did so, mine off D and D Beyond. So yeah. who is after Rick? You I, I got a 10. Steve? Yeah. Yeah, Steve. And then Alex and Seru. <laughs> Yeehaw. You'll be the one saving all of us after this thing beats. Whoa. Patent <laughs> cleanup. That's what he's doing. Patent Hunter promise cleanup. over deliver. I'm going to first try to, you know. Like, <laughs> I'm going to get winded by the time I get up to that thing. So it's going to be okay. <laughs> Right, so the turn order I've got, I've got the shambling mole going first because I, for whatever reason, I rolled a natural twenty. Oh, nice. oh. Bit of only no, one and only time I get that. Damn. <laughs> then we've got Kingsman. Then we've got uh, Mareza. Then we have, am I right? Healy, I believe. Healy, yeah. Then we've yeah. got, uh, no, we've got Malaku. Malaku. Oh, no, Malaku. That's right. Malaku at the 20. Then is it uh, Erasmus, then Seru? Or is it the other way around? Uh, it's uh, Erasmus, then Seru. Right. But um, we're all good to go. Right. So this one's going to start its turn. Let's do it. First encounter. Uh, do you guys want to order yourselves where you are now to a. Better... You came in from this direction. Is there any place you would have gone? To? Just before this happened, within this air, within this area, I'm, I'm going to presume that if I saw them, that Saru would be interested in these mushrooms. That's good. Uh, so yeah, but it depends on when everything came out of the ground. Yeah, no, it's fine. I imagine, like you said, uh, Kingsman was leading, so I imagine he's a bit up front. Oh, okay. Well, then we might not be that far, so I could be back here. Yeah, no, that's fine. And I wasn't far behind the Kingsman, so. Could, so where, you where are you, Dave? Or... I'm over here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I would have been right by you. Right. Like so, together, I guess. Yeah. This, as you, as it comes, it all starts to hulk around you. It's like. <laughs> that's going to come about here. And it is. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna have a, a good old. It's, it's gonna get standards going. <laughs> it's gonna try a swing at Kingsman. I should have stayed on a boat. <laughs> I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm pretty sure your armor class is higher than a six. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it goes <laughs> misses as you like dodge out of the way, but then it goes with this other one. Tries to slam down. It's going to go for another attack at you. Ooh, an 18. Kings, right? uh, an 18 you. does hit me, yes. It does hit. So it's going to do a slam attack. And I uh, 2d8. Give me two seconds. Oh, 10 damage. Ooh. Oh. So as as you've dodged oh. out of the oh. way initially, you've kind of yeah. gone into its range of it going as it kind of like crushes you underneath. You just managed to keep on your feet and like push it away, but you you took a big hit. And so it just lets out this. Oh, okay. And it and is now. It's now your turn. Okay. So I'm going to immediately cast a uh, Hunter's Mark on it, <laughs> so that is pinged. Um, and what I want to do, <laughs> I want to run away. Um, I want to, <laughs> I want to get away from this position because it's, I didn't think it's, I want to get back on the boat. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a healthy position to to be in. So, um, I is is probably going to get an attack of opportunity, but I will. I will attempt to take the hit, and I yep. will run towards this tree and vault up it. Sure, we'll do the initial see if you get away from it. Nope, it did not. It like you were too fast for it. It didn't even come close to hitting you. Cool, I like that. So one, I'm up on the tree, and then um, I'll attack. Say again. Then, so while I'm up on the tree, can I attack? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so we, I'm, oy, I've got a plus that's 24 to hit. Ooh. Yep, yep, that definitely hit. Okay, I only get the I only get the one attack, so let's try. Yes! I've got an 8 plus 3, that's 11. Uh, nice. 11. 11 damage plus, I get my hunter's mark, so that should be uh, a 1d6 on top. Oh, it's only a 1. With an extra one point of damage. Yes, yeah, so 12, 12 damage in total. So as it's, it's slammed down, it's going to attack you again as you've moved away. You've managed to just run out. duck and weave it. You've done a roll away, then you've just ran up this tree, kind of swung around the branch, then like, yep. shot the arrow, it's gone. And it's took some damage. And cool, and that that's, my, that's my go, yes. I only get one attack. Next up, we got one mighty orc. <laughs> All right. So I have two weapon fighting, so I can hit twice. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how to do that because I've never actually fought with two weapons before. <laughs> So do I just roll normally for the first one? It's, yeah, or... it's just two attacks, isn't it? Like you just roll. Is it? Would it be? Yeah, okay. it's treated like two separate if, rolls. If you got, is if it? you got the feet to weapon fight. Yeah, I do. Then just press the button twice. That's fine. Okay. It's just when you when you add the damage. Oh, the first uh, one doesn't hit for the second nothing. One. And I don't hit anything. I just oh. swing and I, I'm swinging like nothing. Swing I should go back to rolling my <laughs> level up dice. They're much better. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so you kind of like run up to go, ah, slash, slash, you hit. It's great. You realize, oh no, that's just a bit of tree. Uh, that was just, I'm slashing mushrooms off of it. I'm, I'm pruning it. Yeah. <laughs> Chill back and sides. <laughs> kind of like, it's like, it feels like you kind of like, um, you know, when you scratch a dog's back, it's kind of like, oh. From from my vantage yeah. point in the tree, I shout out to to Mary. Mary, get on top of it. What? Okay. <laughs> Can I jump on it? Uh, you want to do a bonus action to jump on it? Is that a? Would it be What's my actions? Uh, where's the bonus bonus actions? There we go. Mm. I think you're probably no, done at the moment. No. I don't think I can. No, 
know you because the bonus action is the same well attack, i so. could actually yes i can because i have an action search <laughs> If you want to do your action search to like zig some things and start climbing up. Might as well. Go for it. Roll for it. So what do I need for that one? Is it acrobatics or athletics? Uh say athletics. Go climbing a tree. Are you kidding me? Get it. I am not rolling no, these dice anymore. I'm going like, back to physical dice. You've got a six. You kind of, you've got you the kind of house trade one, two, and a three. I know. I I no mm -mm. no. So I go to jump on it, and I just like yeah. The, Slip on you, some uh, moss on the ground or something. Yeah. As you and then I get a, a mouthful of mushroom. <laughs> As you jump in it, like you say, you get a mouthful of mushroom. One of the tendrils just seem to like, that you grab on just seems to unravel. Yes. <laughs> you can do the Abrea Inagar and just kind of throw the dice every time they do that. <laughs> that one. That was just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hey. You get you get you get the high rolls when it counts. Oh. Yeah, for initiative. <laughs> next. Okay, so next up, we got the captain. All right. Isn't it Malaku so next? It's Malaku, I think. Malaku oh, is it Malaku? For me, yes. Yeah. Oh, my mistake. Yeah, go for it. So Malaku looks at him and says, Like the river over the smooth stone, so be the winds under the feathers of the bird. And he's going to start with an unarmed strike. And he gets a 13 to hit. Does that hit? No. All right. Well, as a bonus action, he's going to do use a key point for flurry of blows. Nicely done. And we'll miss that with a 10. Again, no. So you kind of so, like go ja, da, da, da. words of wisdom and no good on the hits. You seem to be hitting all the, the loose foliage that's not actually a part of it. As you see, it all starts to come off. It does no damage. Yeah. Like Jen, I'm going to go back to physical base. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, fun. Oh, yeah, we're having fun. So the captain, Kadili, looks and you can just see this crackling energy go through her eyes. And she goes, leave my crew alone. As she lets loose a witch bolt. God, an 11. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> That's just the way it goes some days. The witch bolt goes flying off another direction as it hits and blows a tree. Up. Is it a magic attack? Oh yeah. Is it a spell? Which, don't those spells just hit? You don't have to roll. No, like certain ones you gotta roll. No, some, it's like some spells attack. you gotta roll to hit. Uh, <laughs> which hold unfortunately is one of them, and I already used my inspiration, so sadly there is no need. Uh -huh. It's like <laughs> leave my friends alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, it's like, oh shit, it's kind of like <sighs> Epic fail. <laughs> oh, we're doing great. Yes, we like, are. There's a lot going around, so it's like spinning around trying to figure out which one of you to hit. But it's like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> we're, we're giving it a, a, a clipping, a gra grass clipping. I'm not entirely yes. sure with what a, all is on this thing. <laughs> so uh, are we moving on. Is it Resmus? Uh, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> let's get a hit. <laughs> to say well bugger right. this if we can't kill it with steel kill it with fire and i shall walk up uh, to take a, a flanking position opposite mary and as i do so a, uh, a flaming sword manifests in my hand as i cast flame blade and nice. i would like to roll to hit um that's 16 21 to hit in total <laughs> Yes. yes, that misses. No, it hits. No, <laughs> your priest. That's Ooh. thirteen points of damage. Hopefully, the, the flaming blade bites deep into its uh, well, 
vegetated uh, torso. So as you stab into it, the flame just goes <laughs> as it engulfs it slightly in the middle and goes <laughs> and it kind of swipes you away trying to get rid of it and you see bits of flame start to like pair out like <laughs> it doesn't quite set it on fire because the foliage is quite damp and horrible but it did do some damage cool. Asmus <laughs> uh, that's my go over Asmus like that's how you do it <laughs> All right. so, so Alex if you want to cook something this <laughs> this would be good to cook. <laughs> Might make a good stew. Oh, so, grilled veggies. <laughs> so Saru, um, watching this thing, like originally he he was up, as it came out of the ground, his face was interested and, and um, perhaps perplexed of, of what this thing was, and seeing it slamming into his his newfound companions and friends um, takes on kind of this like stomping. Uh, patron moment of now that is just unkind and and st- like steps forward banging pot lid on spoon and it's just like you know what you big shambling thing your roots are showing and he reaches over <laughs> and uh uh at, in um this moment uh let's see who am i next to i have 30 um it, it takes psychic damage after that pull <laughs> uh, i'm gonna step one step closer and uh, I step next to Erasmus and, um, wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, uh, next to Erasmus and I, I reach over and I touch him and say, from the harvest, Father, you'll be okay. And I cast protection from evil and good um, on Erasmus, uh, which if this thing is aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead, uh, it'll have um, disadvantage to attack him. Very nice. Uh, and I'll just like keep banging my my spoon on my shoe. Like, come on, come on! And I like waggle it at him and just like you know, uh, try to uh, get him to come after me. Okay, I like uh, it. Is that the end of your turn? That's it. That, I mean, I, I yeah, I have no useful bonuses. Okay, that's that horrendous timing because it's now it's the top of the round. Yep, <laughs> you've got his attention. Come on! <laughs> so kind of like as it's just as it's pad the flames out, it starts here. You go. <laughs> I love and it. it'll, it'll kind of where are you? yeah you, you're in range so it's it's actually going to try both times and it's going to try and go let's see do you be, do I beat a 16 uh, I'm at 18 so no sir yes. all my classes oh wait 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 bonus it's, it's actually plus seven, which I haven't added. Um, I'd like uh, to buy a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, so 25 will hit. I am so sorry. <laughs> Where you just feel like, yes. I can't like, shield? Oh, no. Is that thing I can do? No. Okay. Right, so as, as it kind of like it kind of wraps you in its arm, you start to feel your body like get pulled into the tendrils and you find yourself within the creature. Oh, he's giving you a hug. Oh, he's smothering him. Oh, bad touch. (laughs) Bad touch, friends. Uh, So, can you make a constitution saving throw? I certainly can. I am going to use that inspiration you gave me earlier. (laughs) By all means. And I improved it by two. To a three. Oh, God. (laughs) So, so let's see. Hold on. Uh, 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 con, con. Okay. So sorry. A five. Five total. Oh, no. <laughs> you do not make the saving throw, and you are going to take. <laughs> eight. Eight damage. Yes. Eight bludgeoning damage. Yes. And you are now restrained within this creature. So. So the start of so the start of each of the man's turn, you have to make a saving throw. Okay. Though I will say you can make a strength check to see if you can break out on your turn. Okay. Yes, because well, you tell him <laughs> it does need an hand, Saru. Do I lose anything else? Like, do I lose reactions and stuff? 
you are considered now to be restrained and you are now blinded, so okay. you do. Uh, right, so it is now Kingsman. Okay, same again. Um, I'm in a bit of a safety position, so I will take another shot. Um, I've got no way of setting my my arrows on fire yet. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I will pull back, I will aim. I will shoot for a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hit. Um, Man, uh, we have not done well. No, uh, that is not. I, I I actually get plus seven. So that was a three. Oof, on, on so you kind of shoot yes. and it's, as digital dice. As you try to aim at it, it kind of just moves. It was in the middle of the engulfing, so it kind of like just spawned and it just went over the shoulder of the arrow. And you're just like, oh damn it. Yep. And still only one action, uh, one attack. Um, so that's me done. I, I'm going to stay in the safety of the tree. If possible, I'm just going to look around the area. We've, we're very much focused on this. Everyone is viewing on this. I just want to make sure there's not another one coming. You look around and you can't see any signs of another one? That's fine. That you know of? Okay. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll now... shout out again. You know, we, we have plenty of space. If we need to move out... Feel free. We have the space. <gasps> Here, Kadili say to Malaku, Malaku, it ain't Seru. We got to get him back. <laughs> am I inside it or am I just rooted in place kind oh, of? Yeah. It, it's it's you kind of like inside. you are inside, but like as, as the body seems, the tendrils seem to move about in place, you do see brief flashes of you. They can see brief flashes of you. I just mean on the tabletop, like I actually need to be like inside the thing. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> there yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could be right over the yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is now uh, Mar Marizara. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm gonna try one more time to jump up on this thing and like stab it. So. First, I will it. do the athletics, right, for the mm -hmm. climbing up on it. Yeah. <laughs> I do it. I rolled you... a two. Wow. I rolled a two. Have you, so... used... No, have you used your inspiration yet? No, I have not. You know what? I'm going to use my inspiration. Oh, I'll try God. it again. One more time. Let's, so let's try this again. Come on. Seriously. <laughs> Dead. Yes. Go for it. This, this, no more, no more ones. No more no, ones. No more ones. That was not a one. That was much better. That was a dirty twenty. Ooh, no, dirty dirty that's a, twenty. That's a hit. Don't annoy it yourself. The last time you kind of like flip, you know, flip your axe, you kind of jump up, like uh, dig into it, and you do do damage with your axe. <laughs> nice. Except it's a long sword. So, so the, oh, the yeah, yeah. Sword. Oh, it's the long sword. You just, the you long sword it. that I'm like digging in to climb up, yeah. help myself up, and then I'm gonna like smash it on the side of its head with my morning star. Yeah, sure. So do damage with the long sword, then do damage with the morning okay. star. So sweet. Long sword. Does a seventeen hit? Oh yeah, no. With the long sword, you already hit. It was oh, the roll oh, okay. damage. Okay. And then. Okay, I can't count. Well, 20 plus. 24 to hit with the Morning Star. Yeah, they, they both hit okay. roll damage for both. Oh, just roll damage. Okay. So yeah. that's. I'm just going to. I can handle the two things. Nice. There's eight there. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. five. Tasty so, damage. so the first thing is climbs up with the sword, is on its shoulders, and then just whacks it on the side of the head with the morning star. Yeah, so kind of like you, you, you knock some of the mushrooms off, but as you, as you notice the mushrooms get knocked off, you, you kind of notice like a good chunk of it just rips off with the mushrooms, and it, and it, it just goes. <laughs> That hurt it quite a bit. 
Did I dislodge it enough from my uh, or sir? <laughs> no. Darn. <laughs> okay. Well, that'll be my turn over. Captain, oh, Captain. Uh, it's Malaku. Malaku. Do not forget. Oh, the sorry. The monk is deadly. More deadly. Malaku than goes. Yeah, dumb stump. You eat what the cook makes. You don't eat the cook. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to start with an unarmed strike. You got with this a time. seventeen to hit, and that will give seven points of damage. Oof, nice. And then he will again use another key point because he's figuring we're going to. Uh, Get a break, a little flurry of blows, natural one. <laughs> it's seriously, it's a joke. Wow. You wow. hit it so hard that your second one just glanced off. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you, you hit it. The first one connected well. You went, went to go flurry of blows and just went, and your arm yep. kind of just went through a gap. And he's like, oh, oh shit. But, <laughs> oh. But I take it the first hit still did not dislodge Saru. Oh. <clears throat> Damn it. All right. So, Ben, in looking at this, can I hit it with a Witch Bolt in a way that's not going to hit Saru? I so don't it's, wanna... it's quite a large creature. So if you wanted to aim high... You're yes. pretty confident that it's not going to hurt Saru. And again, we want to roll a natural Miri. one. Yeah, we want to be away from Miri because I don't want to hit her. The captain is trying to calculate this and going for the side where the least amount of people are attached to it. Mm -hmm. All right. And that would be a 18 plus 5 is a 23. That hits. All right. Nice. And for eight points of damage. She just says, enough, as she clacks her hands together. The witch bolt goes out, hitting its probably tendrils on the other side that are trying to lash out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so you shoot out, so it goes... <laughs> and a good chunk of its own, just like... <sighs> good. <laughs> All right, Erasmus, your sword. <laughs> burn it to ashes, but don't burn Sarah. I will um <laughs> I will dance round its periphery, You're not leaving its threat area. I'm gonna move round <laughs> uh, closer to um to, to Miri. Um so away from the side where uh Saru was sort of pulled in, so I don't bite too deep and, and hit him with the sword. And I'm gonna swing uh with the flame blade again, take another attack. Uh that's another twenty one to hit. Damn. That hurts. Um, and that this is been doing damage. 10 points of damage again. Nice. The flame blade. Uh, and this time, uh, with my bonus action, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck a healing word at um, at Suri. Uh, he's, yeah, he's been hit, he's taken a bit of damage, and he's currently being grappled. So, presumably, the thing's going to keep squeezing and keep doing damage well, each round. As you hit it with that and did some quite big damage. It's not yeah. looking good, and it starts to like fall apart more and more. And Saru just kind of like my just <laughs> breaks away. Yes, Saru, you're breathing. <laughs> Taking oh, this just fun kind, like kind of breaks <laughs> off some of the moss and vines that are still attached. I, I'm still going to chuck a healing word at him because he can yeah. Do with my the ones. Theory, um, so I will say. This shambling mold is not looking good. You get, you get six hit points back, Saru, and, and that's yep. my turn over. And uh, it's now Saru. All right. Let me. Sweet, uh, sweet revenge. My... <laughs> <laughs> I turn and I look at it and I was like, I respect plants. A good salad is definitely something to respect. And <laughs> you are disrespectful. And with that, the Harvest Father sends you back to the earth, and then you'll see my giant soup, my giant spoon glow with this greenish yellow light. As I'm going to use, um, what's it called? Uh, my uh, sacred weapon on it. Um, it's a sacred and spoon. <laughs> let's see this natural one. Let's see what happens. 
Yes. That's a natural 20 instead. I'm going. Right. Yeah, shambling mouth. Yeah. Yeah. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> what is um, the damage? Yes. <laughs> Just spoon it to death. <laughs> you can. Uh... Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, and I get plus two to attack rolls, but I don't think I'm going to need that. Yeah. So uh, um, let's see. That attack is going to be a d8. Got it. Did you do the mighty spell? That will be uh, three plus five is eight damage. Um, it might be radiant, but nope. We we like nine twenties. Sorry, double H, shouldn't you as well? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. How would you like to kill it? <laughs> I would like to take it and yes. first, like I take. That I notice that as I'm bringing it out, and as my my divine uh, energy kind of fills the spoon, like I notice some of that blue goo on the end, and I'm like, hmm. And I, as it kind of like evaporates a little from the end of it, I was like, mentally, this is gonna be good. Bring it down from the side, and I see right inside where that hole that was roughly me shaped. I'm gonna stab <laughs> right through all the way into some of the vital bits that no one else could really reach, and then pull it right back out and. Uh, you know, kind of wipe the end away with my finger and put it back on my belt. <laughs> Very nice. As you do that, it's kind of like... Should, as, as it all just unravels and just... Definitely follow the pun, like something, something along the lines of, you've been served. Right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Literally. Erasmus takes 20 uh, psychic damage. <laughs> um, so it just flops in a massive heap of mushrooms and bone. It's like, oh, it's nasty, but it is dead. Awful. As it starts crumbling, I will like try to f hurl myself off of it and do like a roll so that I don't injure myself falling. Go for it. No, no, no issue. Okay. Let's go. So as you all take a moment to breathe, you begin to feel the ground rumble below you. Oh, no, not again. And that's where we're going to end it. Oh, oh, no. Oh. No. Awesome. Good stuff, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to carry this on next Friday for part yes. two. Well, back awesome. Yep. Please come back. Invite your friends. Part two. Absolutely. For everyone who has joined us tonight, thank you so much. It means the world to me. And if you have the chance to check this out, by all means, go on my Patreon and do check this out. You have full access to all of this. And yeah. if you, you're inclined to see a spoiler or two, you'll get to see how this story ends. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, no. You get a custom Wait. commission. And let Ben and a custom bring commission. your characters to life. I'm saying I, I, I love love hearing about people's characters. I love making them look badass. You do. <laughs> you do. Absolutely. You do a great job of it, Ben. I will say, all, if you like the look of these characters, all these characters will be available on the Patreon within the coming week. Yeah. So you will have access to all these amazing characters. Yay. And I, the amount of abs on these characters, what's not to like? I know. Uh -huh. We're having an ab. We're having an could bench press all of us. Yes. Even Sarah. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's more of a keg, but it works. It works. <laughs> yeah. I got washboard abs. It's just a full load of laundry on top of them. That's everything. Abs. Abs for days. I mean, come on. Just saying, I look at Mary's <laughs> picture, you know, she carries us all. <laughs> okay, so as Ben said, we will see you this time, same Badger time, same Badger channel next Friday yes. for our uh, part two and the finale of this kind of story arc because uh, it, we're here to, p p to support and promote Ben. You can check out the Red Mara Chronicles yourself on his Patreon page. Links are in the chat. And until then, we'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye. Can you hear that? The call for adventure. Well, what are we waiting for? Become a legend of the sea in the Red Marrow Chronicles, an ongoing campaign for 5th edition. Explore its exotic and diverse isles, making friends along the way. 
and no doubt, a few enemies. All while gaining access to hand-drawn battle maps, character art and tokens. Not to mention keeping players on their toes with the ever-growing book of encounters most random. All this and more in the Northern Wildling. Start your adventure today.